picking up, and it was supposed to happen yesterday, but we now had an uh, emergency, so happening right now. Cool. All right, on we go to the to the game. Okay, and we are live. Okay, so what do you guys want to do next? Does anybody need a uh, reminder what you guys were doing last time, or? Yeah, I think so. So the last thing that happened was Elson pushed the trapdoor above the ladder and released a lot of poison gas into Area J9, which made some people slightly angry and very displeased by it. In the meantime, the noise attracted the Guardian, which you can see above over there, uh, which it was at the bottom of the stairs, which they closed the door behind it and they locked from the outside. So you guys are currently trapped in the house where you guys are at with no, uh, no doors or windows of any kind. I hate you guys. At the current rate, you guys will run out of air in about 33 days. I feel like we're gonna resort to cannibalism. Major's like, wait, can we raise you up after? <laughs> Yeah, not Dave is guarding the very valuable cloak. Alright, so it's up. Uh, um, can I? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, how is the door, doors leading out, or the trap door? Is it like you have to push out type of thing? Yeah, and it's already open now, so there's. You, you, you can already see up there if you want to go look at it. That is correct. Hey, Ben the upper, No, nobody has gone up there yet. You only opened the door and the, the poison was released and that was all you guys did. Uh, you can look at it here. Yeah, go ahead and give me a perception check. You can make a determination here see if the trap will go off again. Okay, uh, the trap appears to have been completely disabled after the release and it doesn't appear, doesn't appear to have a reset mechanism. So the trap is, is spent at this moment. You can on there's only place you can go is to this room that you are in. You can go to the little square above there. You see the little S at the top there. Like that's the thing that's currently closed and locked behind you. And you can go to this room and this room. That's as far as you can go. Those three places. Does anybody want to look up on Area J10? See what's up there or? Send Gaston up there. Okay. I feel better about that than one of us going up there. Fair enough. All right. Um, Gaston moans very, very pleasingly. Oh wait, he speaks, doesn't he? He's got, actually got an intelligence. Yeah, he does. He says, there is a very large amount of dust up here, but other than that, nothing, nothing be besides that. Uh, that's pretty much his first assessment, at least. I'm gonna tell him to, like, shuffle around through the dust, make sure it's not covering anything. Okay, he says, I, f I found a broom, and he starts to sweep the, the dust around. Alright, so the only thing that he's found there is a broom. 
Nothing else? Does he need a perception check? Um, you can give me, yeah, you can go ahead and give me a perception check. I think it's a plus six for, for, for guests, I believe. Memory serves me right? I might be wrong. They should have a plus nine to perception. Wow. So it should have been actually been a... That, that would have been a really good roll. Then I was a 25. All right. And Gaston says, okay, this broom appears to not be made of regular wood. Well done, honey. Come back down. Do you want me to bring the broom with me? Is it expensive wood? It looks like an expensive broom. Yes. Bring it on down. Ah, uh, the hatch was already open. That's that's how you guys never triggered the whole trap. So the trap is wide open at this point. But all right, so he brings the broom down and hands it to you. Uh, the broom appears to be made. Uh, it's the, apparently it's not actually wood, but it seems to be made of metal. The entire uh, uh, part of the wood itself, and the bristles appears also to be made of some sort of metal. It's like co completely made of metal. The entire broom. It appears valuable. Does anybody want to do an appraise check? Yeah, this is the part where we all roll, and then it's only like mineral and, and uh, um, Linda that actually gets something decent. Here we go again. Here we go again. Crazy. Nosk think this is just a useless piece of old metal that nobody needs it. Mitro and Nor apparently, however, disagree, and I say that no, I think it's worth a little bit more than that. An appraise check on a broom made of metal? Is there like a way to see if it's something else that's just been disguised? Uh, maybe you could do a spellcraft to detect, uh, see if there's, no, not a spellcraft, I'm sorry, detect magic to see if there's any ores radiating. Detect magic is it a skill. Yeah, not detect magic, I mean the spell. All right, Linda, do you want to roll up uh, praise as well, or? I'm trying to. I had to refresh uh, roll 20. Okay, Nagi, the, the broom radiates illusion magic. What's the chance of uh, being another object that would just devour your soul? <coughs> I mean, how many of those do you really need? Enough to kill your enemies. Is there anything written on the broom? Like, is there any inscriptions on it? Yeah, it says Nippus 2001. <laughs> 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 I was hoping, I mean, you know. Oh, that'd be funny. Alright, so... Uh, I guess uh, the broom itself, at first glance, appears to be worth about, well... Let's just say like this. So Nosk think this broom is worthless, but the rest of you believe like all the metal and everything else around it, it seems to be worth about. Uh, do you guys want it in private? Or do you want to just just say it out right here instead of having to move channels all the time? Majority of us. All right. So the majority of you agree that this broom is probably worth about a thousand gold. But also Nagi realized that it radiates illusion magic. Try to use it and say abracadabra and see what happens. Does anybody yeah, have yeah, a dispel? You do that. Does anybody have the spell magic? I mean, spellcraft identifies magic. That doesn't work. Uh, maybe secure our way out or take a look at it. That doesn't work. I'm gonna cry. Spellcraft, what are you doing with the spellcraft? Spellcraft is the skill used to identify magic. Oh, gotcha. So you're trying to identify what the item is then instead? Yeah, okay. Let me find it here in the notes. What does it say this thing is? By the way, meowing. Hang on one second.
Okay, it is a staff of fire. It's that illusion magic. Right, it, it's a broom disguised. Uh, it's a d staff of fire that has been disguised as a staff of fire. Sorry, it's a staff of fire that's been disguised as a broom to just hide over here. A staff of fire can cast burning hands, who costs one charge. Can cast fireball, who costs two charges, and can cast a wall of fire, who costs you three charges. He currently has six charges. Hello. <laughs> What was the third uh, so, Burning Hands, Fireball, and Wall of Fire. Oh, okay. Sorry, I stopped listening after Fireball. <laughs> yeah, Wall of Fire consumes three charges, the Fireball costs two charges, and the Burning Hands costs one charge. Should you wish to recharge the staff, you have to cast the spells into the, the staff itself. That's interesting. Unfortunately, it's a staff, so it's not very good to me, but... Uh... Hello, boy, come here. Yeah, but for all, all intents and purposes, everybody who looks at it, it looks just like, a, like an old broom. But the, the fact that you picked up on the, the, the very high spellcraft, you realize that it is actually a staff of fire. So if anyone can fly, they can act like a witch. And then they can fly, or her bear can fly, or something. Maybe we can put the bear on the broom hmm? and send it on its way. And then it shoots fireballs out of its... Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> yeah, but he's so awesome. So, I guess we'll stash that on the way for now. Unless... Yeah, we'll take it with us. So then it'll be like, this is our party and this is our cleaner. You know, <laughs> like, with the broom. Um, how do things... Are there attunements in this? Getting the locations? Why would you cast them? You could just fly and hold the broom like it's flying. Aesthetics, really? <laughs> do you want to give label as a witch? Because that's how you get label as a witch. <laughs> It might be an improvement on the necromancer, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I mean... Milo, what has got it? I swear, he, he's lost his mind today. Oh, it's that. Alright, so I'm just waiting to let you guys tell guys to tell me what you want to do next, because that's I've given everything you guys have available currently. I guess, uh, well... Did I check for... Traps or we're just investigation in the other big room. Yep, we have. I'm opposed to burning the thing down with us in it. So it's not. How much rope do we have? Then? Oh yeah, there's no windows, right? Yep. I guess we have to check the door going. See if we can uh, open it. Yeah, so the door is up here. Right, where's the little S? And it, is, it appears to be locked from the other side. Can you ask, is that something you can deal with, or you can't get to it? I'm not sure where the S is. But I... Above you? On the, on the room above you? Do you see it? If you look at the ladder here, this little square that you guys are at is above this building here, above uh, J4, J2, etc. You see the little white lines coming out of this. This represents this stuff that you guys are on. It's above that building right there. So, <clears throat> you basically have to break down that door. I'll attempt to unlock it. You said it's locked or something else. Yeah, it's, it's, it's locked on the other side, though. Right. Uh, am I able to try to unlock it? For even if it's only lockable by one side. Give it a shot. What are these walls made out of? Stone. Disabled device. Yes, that's correct. 
You can't seem to quite open it from the side. It seems to be really difficult. How heavy does the door look? Uh, the door itself appears to be made of wood. Where's Elson's boot when we made it? We could use him as a... a ramming. So, wait a second. So, it, is it, it's, a, it's a lock, correct? Right, from the other side. But it's like a lock lock, it's not like a bar. Correct. Cool. I pull out my adamantine rapier. Okay. And I shove it through the lock. Okay. Which should break the lock. Um, do you want to explain that line of thought? Well, adamantine ignores hardness less than 20, and objects that are hardness 20 are generally steel or better. And I'm guessing this lock is not made of steel. So it's, I'm basically drilling out a lock with an adamantine right here. Damn, fine print. Okay, alright, so you're down there, putting a hole through the lock. Alright, now give me a perception check. The door appears to be slightly ajar, and there seems to be a lot of commotion on the other side of this door. Where is our fighter? Taking a break. In a break. Yep, taking a break. He said we weren't oh. pay paying him enough, so he took a break, yeah. and he's having a strike. Yeah, a smoke break. <laughs> well, Linda, I don't know if they're surprised... Or, I'm sorry, I don't know if they're uh, commotion because of us or not because of us. I would probably send them there. Okay. Free fireball on the stick. Oh yeah, actually that's a good idea. Uh, but it might destroy other stuff. Surprising enough, fireball is one of those spells that it does not ignite. Uh, it doesn't ignite things in the room. It's just an instant consumption thing. It's one of those weird spells. Even though it does fire damage, it's not enough to set things on fire gets consumed instantaneously. So if there was like straw and paper, that would just get instantly burned, but it would not start a fire. Uh, fireball sets fire to combustibles and damages objects in the area. Would someone need to attune to this? I'm not sure how this works. That's very cool. Attune? No, there's nothing like that. You just, if you're... By doing the spellcraft, which is identifying the item, you know the magic words to say into the staff to cast them, pretty much. So who wants to hold on to it? I can't really use staffs in fights, so somebody who's not in the front. Yeah, I can hold the fucking broom. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so I guess at this point, give me initiative orders, since nobody's taking the initiatives here, so I will do it. Stuck a thing in there, and you're at the other door. Right. Oh, that's true. I, I, look, I don't have a good sense of direction. Cut me break. Mm -hmm. So, how many people would you say could fit up there? Dang it! I forgot to click on that. And I believe uh, constructs is knowledge right. engineering, correct? Or is knowledge arcana? Uh, tell you this huh, look at that, I rolled the exact same thing that I rolled. Interesting. Okay. 
There's two of me. How do I get rid of one? Uh, you click on it and you hit delete. Engineering. Engineering, really? Arcana specifically says cannot be used to identify robots or their or their abilities or. Gotcha. Uh, they're they're the same. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, it's like it's like here. All right. Top of the initiative. Nask. Am I able to? Nor why are you in the waterfall? I thing. went to the bath. <laughs> I can't delete. I it. did it. I'm on a Mac. I don't have a delete button. Thank you. I did it. <laughs> Am I able to pass him or see like? Ah, uh, you can pass through Nag if you want to. On the opposite side, there appear to be six homunculus and a faceless flesh golem. Who has the staff of fireball? Um, I believe I've got that. Good. Good. Should we uh, tactically retreat or try to do this? Well, the golem is going next, and Nag is going about to take. Eight attacks. How much movement would you say that is? Would this I be able to send the bear? Uh, it will take you uh, ten. Uh, so two moves. To, uh, so uh, that's ten foot step to get down to where Nagi is, and another ten to another five to just go one more step forward through the door. And you will not provoke because they haven't acted yet. So you can literally get right in front of Nagi, like right here. Because that's the exit, it's going south of it, and you can make an attack if you want. Like all the uh, all the little homunculus seems to be uh, leading this guy. Like I'll show you the big picture here, how they look like. There, there's actually six of them, even though it shows two in the picture. There's six of them carrying this thing. And then the golem themselves have no the golem himself has no eyes. So no eyes, but six homunculus are leading them. Do they look friendly? No. <laughs> How did we get trapped up here? They, they pretty much closed the door behind you. You guys triggered the trap that triggered the alarm that brought them in. Well, I'm going to... Uh, I guess attack one of the mini-bees. Okay. Itself. Go ahead. I imagine they could hear me coming. I wasn't really stealthy that way. Right, but because they haven't acted yet and they're all going to go in the same initiative, they're, they, you're, you can actually get a sneak attack on any of them on your attack right now, but only for this round. Okay. And because they're flat-footed, you hit. <laughs> Yeah, you hit it, but because you just enough to hit him with the flat foot. But let's see how much points these things have. Oh, you did one short of killing one. And you got the offhand attack at the same time, right? And that's enough to wow the, the, the attacks have been like impressively low but you got it you killed killed one <laughs> down to five and the golem is next the other uh, homunculus seems to be now like they seem to be dragging their there's their whole all five of them seem to be saying hey attack this one and they're they're tugging towards us the golem's gonna make an attack towards you First, I need to roll something real quick. Only if I get it. Oh my god! Holy if god. I had gotten a hundred, you would have. They would have gone on berserk mode, but it just missed by one. Oh my god! <laughs> anyway, so it's just gonna do a two slam attacks against you. Let me get this character sheet. Well, I'm probably gonna die. And before you say anything, I made sure this was 
royalty free. Okay. Uh, what's your uh, ace hit points, I guess? I think uh, both hit. All right, let me see if he actually, because because he is blind, I need to roll percentile damage to, because he has a 50% chance to miss you, because he is, has no eyes. That seems like a terrible idea <laughs> to make a golem that has no eyes and yet no blind fighter. Mace is 20 at the moment. Oh, well, he missed horribly, both both cases. Oh, you know what? I take it back. He's not actually blind. It just is here. Homunculi eyes. The cat size eye devils are actually homunculi. So the little devils, they can actually see... The, the golem actually is magically connected to the homunculus, so he can see it. So both of those attacks hit. I'm sorry. Also, you rolled a D0, not D100. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I'm like, wait a minute. The D100s should not have both 100 and 0 on top. True, but anyway, I should not even bother to roll the 100 because the eyes, the, the little guys count as eyes, so they did both hit. So, 22 damage. The first attack I survived, barely, and then I go down on the other. So, you're unconscious? Yes. I think I was slightly hurt from my last attack. Last game. Alright, Mirdro is up. You hear a grunting downstairs. Oh, that sounded like Nusk. Sorry, can I like get halfway down the stairs and see what that thing is? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. From this, from there, you can see her. You can see it. Uh, yeah, knowledge engineering. Can the rest of us also peer down? Yeah, you, you can easily look look down and see it. All right, with a seventeen, you can ask uh, two questions about it. Resistances and immunity. Uh, typical construct magics, uh, construct traits, and also immune to magic. Uh, no other resistances. Uh, nor you can ask one question. Sorry, did you say it was immune to magic? That's correct. It's a construct, they're all immune to magic. That's correct. Even though they're immune, the they're immune to magic, you get this. A flesh colon is immune to any spell that spell like ability that allows spell resistance. In addition, certain spells and effects function differently against creatures noted below. A magical attack that deals cold or fire damage slows a flesh colon as the slow spell for 2d6 rounds, no save. A magical attack that deals electricity damage breaks any slow effect on the golem and heals 1 point of damage for every 3 points of damage the attack would otherwise deal. The amount of healing would cause the golem to exceed its 1 or more hit points and gains in excess of temporary hit points. So, cold and fire, good. <laughs> Slow him down. Electricity, bad. Um, anything else we want to know, team? He's also blind, so anything that affects eyeballs probably is going to help. I mean, I don't know. Excruciating uh, pain to eyeballs might still be an issue. Now, the little guys, of course, are, not, are immune to anything. They're just little guys. The homunculus, you fought them before. I'm guessing you magic missile in one of the little guys? Yeah, yeah, if I can take out one of those. All right, how much damage is that? Oh, then you had one more question that you could ask as well. Uh, since you pretty much don't know what to ask on this one, uh, I'll just go ahead and give it to you. The, the homunculi, if all of them would happen to die, the face colonists would be, in fact, permanently blind. So you'd be fighting something that would instantly be critic, be critically hit no matter what. So as long as you kill the little guys, you should be making this fight a lot easier. And, and the little guys are what exactly? Oh, what do they look they're, like? they're homunculus. Uh, also, I just forgot to do something here because apparently, according to this, every time one of them die, it deals two d ten damage to the golem itself. I need to roll that. Oh, nice. 
Oof. Ow. So that plus uh, three. Okay, so 15 damage. So you kill another one of those. So go ahead and we'll let you guys roll it through the 10 then. Roll another 2d10. Alright, another 7 points of damage. And then I'm gonna send um, Gaston down there to hit one. Okay, it's gonna be on top of Nosk's body and gonna attack the golem or one of the little guys. He'll attack the little dude in the corner. Okay, if he does move through that, then you would provoke. Actually, no matter what, he's gonna get an attack opportunity. Okay, then he can stand on the guy. Single slam. Uh, 21, does that hit him? Does that hit uh, Gaston? I think his AC is 18, so it probably should hit. Okay, so 12 points of damage to Gaston. And he can go ahead and make his attack now. Okay. In the meantime, Nagi, what are you planning on doing? Attack. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Right, so one of the homunculus looks really bad, and there's about three others. And Mirjo, are you also sending your skeleton downstairs? Uh, yeah, let's do that. He can soak them. Alright, so this con check has a plus four on mirror image. Actually, no, he's gonna hang out up here right now. Okay. Alright, Nagi, once you're done uh, mathing, you're, you're up. Uh, yes, if you're attacking the one that was already hurt. The big one. Oh, the big guy? Uh, yep, six points of damage. But uh, it's a Dementine weapon you have, right? Yeah, it's the Adamantine. Oh, Adamantine, that's how you say it. okay. Yeah, does straight damage to it. And they're now four of me. Okay, mirror image. Got it. And the, that's it for you? So, uh, Linda and her bear. Well, it's getting to be kind of tight down there. <laughs> I think th can my bear fit through that mess of? People? You can pass through friendly territory, and the homunculus, because they're tiny, they don't really block you anything. You can just be on right on top of them. But I'm gonna trigger attacks of opportunity as I pass. Bye. Uh, some, it looks like Gaston already ate some of those, so you will not be provoking again until the golem gets another turn. Ah, Your bear cool. Can fly, right? Yeah, my bear can fly. Well, I, I don't remember. I think uh, it got wounded uh, in one of the previous attacks. 
Anyway, I'm I'm gonna send my bear down there, and he's gonna walk all over people, all over, to get to um, the spot over there. Wait, where are you going again? There, okay. Alright, so you're right on top of a homunculus that looks really bad off. Do you want to just bite his head off or just eat it? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to eat it. Alright, make a CMB if you just want to try to eat it. Yeah, bite. Yeah, there you go. It, it, you, you bite it and you swallow it and it's dead. You pretty much cut off one of the cords as you're eating, and the bear's like happy now. All right, roll to the ten. No, no, no. Interesting creature. Yeah, it's an odd one for sure. Glad someone rolled high on how it worked. All right, another eight points of damage to it. Glad this damage is not reducible, and nor is the bottom of the initiative. Oh, wait, 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 I forgot about Linda. What is Linda gonna do? Oh. Uh, there's way too many people in that room. I'm gonna hang out back here. Okie dokie. Alright, go ahead, Nur. How, how far down is this room? Uh, it's exactly 10 feet below you. Hmm. Okay. Do I fit there? Uh, you could squeeze and get past Gaston and be just above the other homunculus just south of the golem. You could go there if you want to, without provoking. That doesn't sound great, though. <laughs> it just it doesn't sound very good. Okay. Can I have so many footprints on my Yeah, people are just walking all over you, literally. <laughs> yeah, um, does anyone need healing urgently? Nas for the ground. Me! <laughs> I am Other than Nosk. <laughs> Nosk? Okay. Alright, I watch it. Okay, let's fix you up then. That's probably a better use. You do you. You could squeeze with Nagi. I mean, the only thing that would affect is Nagi would get a minus two to hit and minus two to AC. What did I do now? No, if, uh, if, if <laughs> Nor goes down to heal Nosk and squeeze, share a space with you, if you consider you're squeezing, you take a minus two to rolls. But you could move, I suppose, on your Yeah, you can still move. By one. Even, even, if, even if he hits me, it's a one in four chance to actually hit Yeah, yeah. Him. Okay, how much, uh, how much down, like, what's your health deficit? Oh, I'm at, well, are there negatives? Yeah. <laughs> He's at negatives. There you go. All right, then. Cure serious wins it is. Alrighty. Yeah. By the blood on Gorber, be healed. <laughs> So I take the negative from that, yeah. right? So how far down were you? I believe 8. That is 10 death? Or... Um, it's your, I think it's your call modifier plus 10. Ah, okay. Okay, so you're back to 14. You're alive on the ground. And the place where you got hit and smacked now, there's like, it seems to be a little... Black scars as if they were healed over by a Nurgorber cleric. Black scars. But they look cool. They don't affect you in any way, they just look cool. Uh -huh. Alrighty, Nosk, you are up. Or I should say, you are down, but it's your turn. <laughs> Do I get disadvantage from attacking while I'm on the ground? Yes. Yes, you do. Dang. Let's hope I can. Not a thing what was that? He said, do I get disadvantage for being on the ground? I'm like, disadvantage is not a thing. Uh, Be gone, you D&D scrub. <laughs> so I, I've played so many versions. So I, I know, I know. <laughs> well, if I can make it look cool, I would like to attack and then, like, swing my body to try to get up as well. Or do I have to get up to move to the nearest 
enemy. Okay, you could get up here without provoking because they have already taken an attack of opportunity. And this is the last time that somebody can do an action without provoking. So you could get up right now, share the space with, with Gaston. But you could get up here safely if you wanted to. And even move around if you wanted to. You could get right here if you wanted to. You can just walk there because nobody can provoke. Because Gaston is where you were. I was just moving out of the way so you can move. So you are currently in a flanking position with Gaston. I'm guessing the information about how the imps hurt the big guy was shared. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I'll wait. Basically, then just shout it out kill the little turds! Are there any, I guess, little turds accompanying the big dude? Yeah, they're all tied to him. Or... Do you see the little three white squares around it? That's what's left of them. Yeah, would I get, like, my flanking attack or sneak attack? Or Not on the little guys, but you would get it on the golem. Or the only the big yeah, only on the big dude. Okay, if you wanted to flank a little guy, you can actually either be here or here then, if your plan was to flank. Because from here, you can flank this, because they're a tiny creature, so you can flank with the bear. Or you can be here and also flank this little guy with the bear. If that's if your plan was to kill one of the little guys, then that corner may be your best bet. And also you'd be flanking with Nagi as well. Alright. Alright. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you're going after one of the little guys, right? Yes. Alright, go for it. Right, 18 will hit, and that is 12 points of damage, which kills one. So roll 2d10, and that damage is going to be applied to the golem. So 2d10. Nice damage. Wow. So, am I able to attack a different target with my offhand? You sure can. Or is it... Mm-hmm. And this one wouldn't be sneak. Oh, it would, because you have a diagonal uh, flank with not Nagi. Oh, you could take the other little guy, which is in, was in the space above where you are right now. And they're, you're sharing space with a little guy, but because they're tiny, they don't matter. But you can, if you want to take the little guy, you can as well. No, no, not this one. Oh, damn, you killed him anyway. Yeah, they're not immune to. No, not the little ones. Okay, roll another 2d10. And I was worried about this fight. <laughs> so was I until you mentioned the 2d10 part. Yep. Jesus, okay. I guess I'm uh, coming back with a vengeance. Alright, it's the golem's turn, and I guess the the l l last homunculus, now desperate, is, po is pointing towards you. Kill that one, that one, that one. Kind of tugging himself towards you. Uh, picking on me. And you can make an attack of opportunity as it it's go beneath your, uh, goes below your legs as well. So you get a free attack with your main weapon. Because he's trying to tell the big golem, he killed this one. <laughs> Alright, not enough damage to kill it. But the golem's gonna go full on Hulk mode on you.
First attack. Ow. Yeah, so you're negative five right now. You're you're unconscious again, right? Yes. And says, "Swing that way, that way," and he turns around and swings towards the bear. I did my job. Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. The bear takes seventy points of damage. Ow. And that's it for their turn. Mirror drill. Here, saving our butt. This gun is no joke. It should be the last week that Mandy uh, is playing a type of place where she can focus, but she, next next time we play, she should be playing from home, so. Yeah, sorry, this is the last week I have to work through the game. Um, I can use attacks on the big dude that have spell resistance, no, right? Yes, correct. Acid arrow, okay. You need a range attack? Yes. Oh wow, that killed the bear. Jesus. I mean, you, you hit for about 40 points of damage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that will hit, because it only has an 8 AC <laughs> for ranged. Because it's against touch. So yeah, you hit. So roll 2d4. Five points of damage. Ha ha ha. But then it gets another. Then it gets the acid. Another 2d4 each round. Oh, it's each round. Okay. Uh, and then uh, Gaston's gonna go try to finish off that last dude. Okay, going up to the little guy, so he's gonna five foot step here. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, that killed it, and the, the the damage you deal now might kill the golem. Let's see, roll to the ten. Your odds are very well in your favor, unless you roll two ones here. And that's enough. You win. Oof. Kills it. Congrats. Yeah, that thing was no joke. Yeah, for a second. I was gonna make some comment about saving your stupid stinking human. Mm-hmm. Elson come by says, Nosk, are you okay? Uh, <laughs> I respond. Alright, I'm gonna I go back to my smoke break. Many of the little people. <laughs> I, I, stay, I did a lot of work. Yeah, as you're covered in blood of Golem and all that other stuff. Maybe I should uh, toss Nosk another heal. What do you got? How many fingers am I holding up as the four of me hold up seven fingers? <laughs> <laughs> it's not confusing at all. Not at all. Two and a half to the square root of pi. Yeah. So you're back under 16, so you're back to being at. I believe it was a fortune. So you're back at 13 hit points? My math is doing right? I think it was negative 5. Okay, something. so you're 11 then. 11, okay. And you're back up and running. Well, a little. little got a lot of cool scars on you now. Yeah, all this blood and guts. I'm just like saying, hey, see what I did? You died. Almost. Alright, so the on. Hey, this is not all 
all my guts. It's from the enemy. <laughs> it's not all. So the only place you guys have not explored is north, which seems to go lead further into the mountain. And this little stairs right here. So the stairs in J5 and the door out of J5. My we took a quick look at the stairs last time. Oh yeah, we checked these doors before we went. Didn't we? Yeah. You did not go up the stairs. Didn't go so. into them, I don't think. But... Nobody went to the huh? stairs that goes up to J6. Nobody did that. But that's where the golems were. Okay, fine. Did um, we okay. check J4? Nor did you say you have something that cures uh, the undead? Cures the undead? I suppose I could use... Well, I could adapt any of the spells, right? Uh, our illustrious GM. Is that because something I'm, you're able to... I think so, because I'm evil now. So, all the undead are my friends. Mm -hmm. my, my two children could use a bit of... of unhealing or whatever you want to call it. Uh, all right, let's see. Actually, it might be worth just channeling and catching all your children. How about that? Oh, that's fine. Let's I'm see. Totally now, if you were to channel negative energy, it would heal them, but otherwise positive energy would kill or harm the undead. Yeah, that's why we're going to channel negative energy to help them out. All of us living have to get out of the way. Yeah, I have the exclusion. Yeah, so she's selective um, channeling beats. so that it only hits those. Yeah, selective channeling. Yeah, so we can choose who it affects, which is useful. Um, okay, so remind me, is it 3d6 that I roll now for channeling? It's been a little while. I honestly don't know. I'm gonna have to look it up. Yeah, I'm, I've got it. Hang on. I'm just checking now. Um, and 1d6, and then for so it's 3d6 at level 5, I get my next one that's uh, level 7. Okay, yeah. so it's, yeah, 3d6. Do, do, do. Here we go, incoming yeah. for your beloved children. Alright, 11 back. Both skeleton and Thank golem. You. Not golem, ghast. Okay. Yeah, just rags and leather straps pretty much that were attached to the golem. Nothing, nothing valuable at all. Alright, do you guys want to go explore J6 and J7 above the stairs? It's literally the only place you guys have not finished up in this whole map, it's these stairs. And then this will just lead you to another map. Linda is very helpful. Yeah, totally. I'm trying. All right, well, the door is appears to be open into J7 when you went up the stairs, Linda. Cool. Hey, the door is up, open. You guys should go check it out. All right. Yeah, up the you guys should definitely check it out. Okay, so who is looking? At uh, I think can I? Yeah, go ahead and give me a perception check if you want to look into that room. I stealth down here. <laughs> you can always stealth me, even though there's nobody here. You can totally stealth there. Alright, with the perception 13, you see three large, sealed, opaque, black glass jars sit inside this room. 
Cool. You guys should come check this out. Mm hmm. Um, does anyone actually have a knowledge of alchemy? Like a plus to identifying stuff? Elson does. But yeah, but these are three large sealed, opaque, black glass jars that sit inside this room. Any of you able to see if they're magical, like potions? Can we, like, use any of our knowledge? Like, knowledge nature, maybe? Uh, no. Nope. Maybe something in there? <laughs> To, the only way to figure out what's inside those jars would be to open them, or you can just leave them be. Gaston should open. I was just about to ask yeah, what happens if he opens them. Gaston turns around. Are you sure you want me to open this? Gonna it doesn't appear safe. Yeah. Why do you do that? Away. What was that? I'm sorry. Why does he? Why do you say that? Because every time somebody hides a jar in a dark place, there's always something bad inside it. Something extremely uh, valuable. There's been a lot of traps. All right, well, you're the boss. I'm opening one. I have three jars. Which one do you want me to open? Oh, I don't care. All right, do you want me to just kick them open? Just open up by myself, or what do you want me to do? You're supposed to be the smart one. Unscrew the top, dear. Okay, but I don't have a screwdriver. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, opens one. There's a lar there's a loud scream that comes out of one of the jars. It appears to be a decapitated head of a head of a hag, but it's it, it's dead. It was just a scream that was lingering. But being dead, he's not affected by it. There was a dead lady's head in this one. All right, what about the other two? Opens the second one. A bunch of yellow mold spores uh, burst into the into the air. Once again, being dead, not affected by it. It's going well. So glad we have a party-ish. Alright, opens the last one, and yet again, another different set of spores of an unknown creature. But being undead, once again, not affected by it. Well, that went well. Oh, we have three empty jars now. Says Gaston. And and one separate head. Yeah. I wonder. Empty jars can come useful. Uh, the other thing that's left now is the dead head. It looks really ugly. I'm, I, I, I have a point of reference here. Do we need an undead head? Couldn't hurt. Oh, it definitely. Could we, like, talk with Undead and see what it has to say? I have that spell somewhere. I lend it. Specifically for fun things like that. Speak with Dead. That's the one. Sure, go up to the, sp uh, go up to the spore filled area. I'm gonna tell him to bring the jars and the head back down. The, the, see, the there you go. Jars, plural? All right, so the two of the jars are empty because the spores are pretty much dissipated into the air. The one had the one jar with the head inside. Hey, <laughs> it's a jar head. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, there's there's a. It says it's a very ugly woman inside this jar. Make judgment. Back down. Do we want to talk to her or we don't care? Nope, nothing else. Does anybody want to look at said ugly woman's face? Good. Well, yeah. Alright, make a fortitude save. There it is. Ah, ha, ha. That's not great. You save against this, but apparently the, it's a horrific appearance. The sight of a sea hag is so revolting that anyone within 60 feet other than the other hags sets eye upon them would, would instantly be weakened, taking 1d6 point of strength damage. So that's why undead are not affected by it, because like, whatever. 
But yeah, it's a it's a sea hag. You immediately recognize it as a sea hag. Uh, it's dissipated now. It's like a one-off kind of deal, but nothing else of value up there. Can we keep the head and use it by like a Medusa head and just kind of like, you know, point it at people and that terrified and they have to save against it? That is up to you guys. <laughs> you, you remember that whole 60 foot thing, right? Did I start a trend okay, on using okay. everything as a weapon? <laughs> I I mean Gaston could hold on to it and just pull oh. it out as I, I you know, I hate to be the voice of reason, but sometimes you just gotta put your foot down. You mean your head down? It's like how much could we actually get for the hag head, the other devouring item that she had so far? You could probably find some crazy collector like a necromancer that might be interested in it. I think we already have one of those. You could also make a nice trap in your dungeon. I mean, in your home. They already have a dragon skull. Yeah, but people like the dragon skull. Yeah. Well, for all intents and purposes, it's in inside an opaque jar, so it's safe for now. You can. In the future, if you want to take it out, you just pull it out, eyes closed, put it on a impaled pole or something. That'd be a pretty good defense. Timmy would want it. He likes heads. Oh. <laughs> Timmy probably just walk around with that in town and just oh. <laughs> just killing everybody with strength damage. I love it. Okay, we're, we're throwing this into the river. The, the, the necromancer cannot be trusted. That's what you guys decide, just oh, toss yeah. it in. When we were outside on the bridge, did we see any more buildings to the north? Uh yeah, that path it seems to lead up into the mountain. Like front front area from this area right here, you could have seen north that there's like a very very large building to the north following that path that goes out of this door here at J five. So you could go that way or you could rest right now. Maybe recover some of your hit points and spells. I'm going home. Do we need to go home yet, or...? I don't know. How, how, how confident do you feel from like, with a third of your hit points? Oh yeah, and we don't have the bear. Yeah, yeah this would be unbearable. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go there, come on. That's too easy. Alright, so I'm guessing no objections here seems to be going home. We're just gonna rest here. I mean, you do have a nice, nice beds here that you could take over, like a G13 and a G11. There's plenty of beds for y'all. I'm going home. Home sounds kind of better. Alright, let's send you guys home. It's about another eight hours come by, and you head on home. So I'll check on the miners first thing, see if they got into any more shenanigans. Yeah, the workers report that they dug the tunnel, as you asked, to the west, and they found a hole, and they started building a rope ladder that goes down into the hole. The hole itself seems to be, uh, there's surprisingly in this hole, which is, we didn't expect to find one this, this soon, but there appears to be a lot of blood around the hole and a lot of, uh, bone parts that leads down and downstairs somebody what kind of parts <laughs> bone parts like uh, legs like uh, legs arms etc but no no heads or torsos of any kind well i'll leave that to the local necromancer to mess with that and they mentioned that they reinforced the doors to the left to the east and the west one that seals the water and there's the bombies to the east 
and they slowly push them down back a little and they have an empty room with nothing to do with it. Did they ever get a new living area? I know there's a lot of space where the huge chemicals were. Well, everything that you see blank there is empty space for you guys right now. I mean, you guys literally have the map in front of you. So, this is daunting enough that I will ask you guys about the keeping wool that's bleeding. Oh, yeah, I want to go look at that. Yeah, so let's take a peek. Look at what again? The, the giant bleeding hole in the earth. Okay, uh, they say, recommend you going down by yourself. It, it, it seems to be really warm down there. We're not quite finished building the rope ladder down there. Well, how far have you got down there? So far, we um, our basic math here about eighty feet. So there's a bunch of bones and blood and whatnot around it. Yep, and uh, we started building the rope ladder down. We're about eighty feet down. <laughs> can I grab something very clanky and loud and like drop it? You sure can. Would you like to grab one of the hundreds of bones around it and just toss it down the hole? Ah, yeah, sure. All right, it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. About a minute later, he seems to hit the ground. Do we hear anything, like, scuffling around after that? That's kind of what I was... Nope. Waiting to see if something would come up. Other than the echoing sound of a bone hitting the ground and shattering, nothing special. A, a minute later. A minute later. Let's, let's do some math here. I still would probably want this under lock and key until we export it. We're still battered from uh, sieging the key, I guess. Mm hmm. Did the spellcraft tell anything? Uh, th nothing here radiates magic, just lots of death and bones and blood, really. And a lot of warmth coming down from as far as they've managed to get their rope down. It's pretty warm. Are you able to uh, emanate the whole thing? Able to do what? What? Uh... I try to raise the dead on the hole. <laughs> I really want... <laughs> if I if I tie the rope to myself, will you lower me down as far as I can go? Hang on a second. Never mind. Uh, what what was what are we making that intelligence roll for? Well, you said it took a minute to fall. If it fell for a straight minute, that hole is ten thousand feet deep. Okay, maybe not a minute. There it's it was speech, figure of speech. It took about ten seconds. I, I I mean, I'm just saying when we have planar shifting to the nine hells. Okay, yeah, just, it took about 10 seconds. Just took, it took about a minute or something. Just took a little bit of time, sorry. Should have worded that better. Wow. My climbing skill sucks. I'm not going down there. Alright, so well, I'm heard of your, your minions will lower you down the rope. You said... Uh... And you come up up here. Do you see where I ping right here on the east? Northeast? No, I missed. Uh, uh, can you see it on the screen? Top right of the map. I got you now, yeah. Yeah, so you see lots of lava down there. And this two appears to be two, uh, one giant blob made of magma. Seems to be crawling towards you. Do you tug on the rope? Yeah, yeah, bring me back up. <laughs> and before I go, any magic down there? Oh, yeah, a lot of radi magic radiated a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me a quick perception check also as you were down there. See if you had enough time to do it. Uh, 
Alright, you also seem to notice what appears to be a young dragon down there. At the corner of your eye, you heard, you heard a roar and something like... Oh. Yeah, you see that down there as well. Would we know anything about dragons or anything? Oh, we know lots about dragons. <laughs> you see a large lizard with wings that the face is covered in magma and dripping magma out of its face. Not a normal good dragon thing. What color was it again? A black uh, black skin dragon. That was I was asking. Oh. I guess my first question after that, can it fit through the hole? That, that <laughs> was going to be my second question. <laughs> Did I get a sense of that? Alright, as you pull out and you get out of the hole, a, a burst of flame comes through the hole, up into up from there. So like fire just got bursted out of here. But they don't seem to be climbing up, they don't hear any noise, it's just like a loud roar coming from down there. And now the rope is on fire, the rope ladder that they had started building. I'm shocked. If we could lower it up here. No. Ooh, what do you say? That was good, Saracen. I took a quick, <laughs> quick an hour nap. I couldn't sleep very long. How's it going? Dragons are intelligent, aren't they? Yes. Well, uh, generally speaking, depends actually. It actually depends. They're actually smarter than all of you put together. Yeah, can can I just say we clearly picked a really good spot for our house? I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, zombie infestations, dragon holes, it's great. Don't you love the zombie dragon? No. <laughs> we call those Draco liches. <laughs> On every level, no. how, Mitchell, explain to me how big was this thing? I'm, try, I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out which uh, which knowledge skill gives me knowledge about dragons. Towards the end, this house is going to be a full adventure. I've only ever seen pictures of full-size dragons, but this one looked rather small. Bigger than the hole, yes or no? Yes. Did I get a sense of that? Yes, it, you you can tell that it was it would not fit through that hole. Bigger than the hole. And as you describe it, give me a knowledge planes. What everybody just. Ah, uh, she described it, so she has the first roll. Oh. She the one that saw it, so. Being... Oh, apparently, wow. you've studied these creatures in detail. You know even wh how old that one was, apparently. That one appeared to be only about 300 years old, so a very young dragon. With a knowledge of 30, you can ask uh, two questions about it. So you know that it was a young magma dragon. So does it like water? have a lot of water nearby. By the time, as hot as it is down there, the water will have turned to steam. Probably. Well, we can try to keep it away and, like, build or dig a hole and let it release all at once. But I doubt that it would wait around that long. I'm actually... I walk over to the edge of the hole hole and yell in Draconic, Hello! Okay, no, no response. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you can ask, would you like to ask any questions about it or are you thinking about it? I'm still thinking about it. I mean, it. you would have a deep knowledge of this creature, so you would know that. I, I guess uh, you, things that you would probably ask around because you had, you had a perfect role on it, so I guess you can ask about special abilities and I'll be your true roles for it. 
what are the special abilities? Magma Tomb. Once per day, a Great Worm Magma Dragon can spit lava into a target within 120 feet, dealing damage normally for its breath weapon. The magma cools instantly and does not continue doing damage at this point, but does entrap the victim. DC equal to the DC Dragon's breath. Save DC for 3d6 minutes and has to do 45 damage or the person dies inside the Magma Tomb. And of course, second, Magma Breath. Three times per day, an ancient and old dragon can breathe a cone of lava instead of fire. Which, this one is not ancient, this one is a young one. So it'll only be uh, 66 of fire every... Yeah, yeah, totally young. Yeah, so, uh, but the magma clings to those it damages, dealing half damage each round, thereafter for 1d3 rounds. After that, magma cools down, it crumbles to dust. Are you open to negotiation? How much gold do you have? You get a response. Two pennies oh. and a copper. Uh, we, Shut we, up. Do, <laughs> we have quite a bit of gold and have a lot of magical items to sell. But should we try to please him until we find a way to get rid of him? Then he might die if he go down there to fight it. It would die, yes. Bag of holding. Do you want to hold it for us? <laughs> Send the zombie down. Well, I'm shoving you to go tell it to the dragon. I'm not going to tell the dragon that. I'm actually trying... Look, dragons can be negotiated with. Alright? Work with me here. Again, I ask, how much gold do you propose? It's probably going to be a group effort type of thing. How much should we suggest? How, okay, again, how much do we have? Uh, leftover. I know I spent a lot. I think I helped out with that gold and the real one. Does anybody keep track of how much gold you guys have? Or are you all just guesstimating as you go? Yeah. How much gold uh, I have? Yeah, I have my own. I have like three thousand eight hundred and seventy-five gold. Five thousand plus whatever we throw down there. Fifty thousand, and I won't eat you the next time you come down to my domain. Could be a problem. So they're saying that we bring fifty thousand next time, and we don't get eaten. Correct. So let's not go down there for a while. I'm wondering if it has 30,000 plus you can loot whatever bodies we do throw down there. 35,000 and you you get to give, give me extra loot every other week. How much? 10,000 every other week. I don't like the idea of being blackmailed by like a squatter in our place. 25,000 and we don't flood your domain. Dead dragon speaks from this area. You realize this is magma down here. Water's not gonna do anything. Tell him we have alchemists and we can Challenge overcome this. Accepted. The dragon is smarter than you guys. Yes, but we are determined. <laughs> do we know if magma dragons ever go out or have other ways of the air? Probably. I'm not particularly scared by a diamond dragon. Oh, we're kind of damaged at the moment. I, I didn't say I wasn't scared, I said I wasn't particularly scared. You would love to get back into RPGs? Oh, it's an awesome game. Most of my players are from all over the US, Saracen. It's a good group. I like this group. Starts beginning to figure out the could always potentially recruit people from uh, the village and say that there's a reward or I don't know how we want to deal with this. If you think we're we'll just leave it alone, hopefully it doesn't bother us. I don't know, I kinda like the idea of going to war with the dragon. Yeah. I'm wondering if it'd be pissed off if I brought the other miniature dragon in with me. Hmm. 
put it on my back. Oh yeah, <laughs> we can throw <laughs> that down there. You know, not the Pathfinder stairs. It's pretty much like 3.5, <laughs> like the 3.5. It, it diverted it from 3.5. It went to Pathfinder. Totally. But it's if you've played 3.5 before, that's when we're ready for the actual. D and D is pretty much accurate. Well, you said it was a youngish dragon, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah, it could have been this sibling. He shot in front of there. So do we have a deal? Do I have to call my brothers? Hang on a minute. We're not looking at him, so can we even call bluff or? I, I, I was actually I was actually just about to check that because I I know that dragons are not exactly the friendliest of folk with your family. No, yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. So you're trying to doubt what the dragon said? Go ahead and roll sense motive if that's what you want to do. <laughs> you believe him wholeheartedly. At this point, you are actually terrified. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that we rolled 49 and y'all are, are still... <laughs> Get it, twenty. Yeah. Where are we? Where are we? Young dragon, my ass. Yeah, I thought everything like above three to four was miniature adult. Plus thirty-six, young dragon. Yes. We can take him. No, I Could we? Probably. So fifty thousand on our next excursion. That ought to do it. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean this broom. I don't know, guys. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of for the for the sending adventurers down there to kill them. We can always yeah. do that as well. We just want to buy ourselves a bit of time. Well, I mean, we don't have fifty thousand gold to hand anyway. So what you guys saying? You, you're opening a dungeon here. You're trying to start serving. Party of four. Down dungeon downstairs is open. Is that what you're doing? I like it. I mean, the, my alternative idea is to cordon off this and then open the the flood of zombies and start feeding them down the hole and see exactly how that works. All right, roll me a quick intelligence check here, Nagi. I just want to check something real quick. I can listen to this. All right, so your your way that you want to defeat a magma dragon is to send magical undead zombie water down into a pool to make a magma dragon less powerful. Not to make him less powerful, more to irritate him until he comes down to a more reasonable number. Or until he decides to come up and fight us, which is well. That's okay. why. I, that's why I asked you, can he fit through that hole? And you said no. That hole, is, we make a that hole is at least a hundred feet down. Right, but he can always make the hole bigger. Somebody made this yeah, intelligence check. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying he can't make the hole bigger, but I'm very skeptical that he can make the hole bigger before we realize he's making the hole bigger. So how much was it just Detail. Detail. He asked for 50,000, you guys negotiated down to 35,000 plus some sort of uh, every other week, loot. Yeah, no, 10,000. Oh, I think the first loot would be the, uh, the, what was it, cloak of holding? Bag of holding. He's not gonna bite on that, okay? I don't wanna arm, I'm not arming a dragon with that. But we can sell it, or the sarcophagus, or the staff. We can get money. So are you guys? So you guys are trying to hire the dragon, bribe the dragon, or just keep him from eating you guys? Well, option C is kind of a, a passive yes. Like regardless of what we do, that's that's kind of a passive yes. It's like we want to hold him off until we know what we're doing. I'm all for hiring him. However, I also know that if we had the amount of gold that we would need to hire him. 
Yeah, I thought we were trying to just bribe him to ignore us. We do own this house legitimately now. We could show other... Oh, I don't know if that's a good idea. You want to show him the deed of this house and hope that makes him... <laughs> no, so... Have other people come in here and know... <laughs> legitimately, we are here. You must vacate the premises, <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm going somewhere else, but uh, can we can we hire a, a dragon lawyer? <laughs> Do those exist? You are in a town full of lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, they're gonna die if they go down there. This is their own house, by the way, sir. Should we get other people involved in this? Or how do we want to deal with this? Because anything over a hundred, I say, is. Pretty wise. Yes, I like to hire a dragon of fiction. <laughs> yeah, I like to hire a dragon's eviction officer. <laughs> Why do you have a dragon in your house? No reason. <laughs> questions, okay? It doesn't matter that we have one in our house. Yeah, exactly. We want it not in our house. Oh, all right. I'm trying to think. The dragon says, "Well, I am sealing up this hole until you make up, you make up your mind. You're not you're not coming down to my domain without my strict permission." He says. And you hear magma being blasted, and it's very loud, and the hole is not appears to be covered. Damn, I was hoping we could like piss him off so we can try to poke his head up here, and then drop the cloak. You know, th there is one. We we do have one backup. One oh shit, maybe we can actually survive with it. <laughs> this is gonna be good. But I'm not gonna say it because I know she's gonna say something to it and I wanna make sure it's it's the <laughs> it's our oh shit button. No go for it. I mean I'm 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 I don't know enough not to spoil players uh, this is a game this is a game where DM is here to help you guys progress through your story. It's not about ruining everything you guys wanna do. No, 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 it's simple. If push comes to shove and it decides to attack us, I just turn my scimitar Vorpal and pull my roll of 20. <laughs> that works, I guess. That's like the... Okay, we may not die. There's like a 1% chance. A 5% chance. You, you want to die. 5% chance. Basically, me sealing the hole is me telling you guys, hey, you should not go down there yet. Yes, we know we shouldn't go. We can take it. <laughs> If possible, I'd like to have at least, for at least a day or so. <laughs> at least a day or so before we assault the fortress. <laughs> uh, I, I want to keep a watch out. Oh. Yeah, the, the workers, see those little red doors? Red doors, that they, they, they made them of steel. The worker says, we will need payment for the, for the doors. We had to go buy them in town. Once we saw what was out in that hole, we decided it was a good idea to reinforce those doors. How much? Right, because if a hundred feet of rock is, isn't going to stop it, a five foot steel door. Oh, they said, well, it was a very expensive door. It was about two gold. I think I got last time. It's, uh... Timmy, that's coming out of your wages. I don't get... Oh, it's fine. So two gold for both doors. Here you go. Yeah, and Timmy goes, I get paid? <laughs> well, how much do I get paid? He, he, now he gets very you curious. Take, uh, you, take, you take that up with the resident necromancer. You get paid in oh, skulls here. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say, bones. Right? Okay, how many skulls do they need for those doors? He, he asks, and he opens up a bag of holding with like hundreds of skulls. Gentlemen, how many skulls for those doors? <laughs> one, of the, one of the minions, not one of your minions, I mean, one of your workers turns to each other and says, One skull is fine. Timmy looks at his bag. Do you want humanoid, dragon, a Draco Lich? Do you want a dragon head? Uh, what kind of skull were you looking for? Timmy, where did you get the Draco Lich skull? Oh, for my friend Bob. Bob? The Draco Lich that killed. So, Timmy. Yeah? We have a new job for you. <laughs> <laughs> Ha 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 
<laughs> What's that? So in that hole, there's this big dragon. <laughs> oh yeah, I know him. Is he one of your friends as well? Uh, no, he, he doesn't like me. He says I'm, I'm not tasty enough. He, he tried chewing me a few times, but once he realized that I'm dead, he didn't. He just spit me out. So you guys aren't friends? No, no, not really. Should we, uh, get rid of him or <laughs> show him, uh, respect you? <laughs> Jimmy the Dragon Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I, I, I don't know it's, if it's a good idea for you guys to go down there. He's he's very mean. Timmy, Timmy by the way, is a, it's a little right. Attica Whisperer. Uh, Hang on, I need to show. Uh, Chad is asking who's Timmy, so I need to put Timmy on the map. So that's Timmy. That's Timmy there, Saracen. That's who has Timmy is. It's a little undead skeleton guys that they befriended in here. And supposedly he has a bag of holding full of skulls. Mm hmm. And he, he says he likes to collect them. So anyway, bag of devouring sails. Where is not Dave? He is right here. There's there's Dave. There's not Dave carrying your bag, or your uh, bag of devouring. Uh, he got real close to your screen. <laughs> Whoops! Somebody in chat is actually enjoying this. In, at what time of day is it? Would we still be able to go talk to that evil blacksmith? Evil blacksmith? The one that made your adamantine weapons? Who wanted our souls? Yeah, the Asmodian guy. Yeah, you should be able to still, should still be open. What, what are you guys are procuring the evil blacksmith for? Well, I just want. I, I just said we should sell the thing. She's the one who brought up the blacksmith. Well, he seemed like a good place to start, as far as who would be willing to buy such a an item. Yeah, he might know some. All right, now the big question, are you guys having not Dave carrying it for you all the way to the blacksmith? Um, do we have a very large cloak? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I have an idea. How many minions do we have? I believe eight. Two who are the, the foremans, and Timmy, the slave master, and the six minions. I believe such as there is it. And have them carry. So you want to have a bunch of six uh, completely untrained peasants carry a cloak that might have a chance to eat them if they slip into one of them. Up four and on skills, but yes. Okay. They ask, okay, well, we might need an extra payment. That looks really scary. That, that big troll was holding it all day long. I mean, we, we're not sure... We might need to pay an extra one copper for us here for to do this kind of job. And we we sure need sure. a fresh. No problem. We could use a fresh uh, zombie to take stuff in dangerous stuff into the town. I'm gonna roll acrobatics for my minions who are be taking the cloak for you. They 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 see that they need to make is a five. Well, you have one less minion. You have two less minions. <laughs> Three less minions. Alright, you have no minions. Okay, um... How many feet did good idea at the time. You now have, ex you have four extra copper. Perhaps we wait until dark and then um, try to disguise uh, not Dave. Okay, Chad is asking what happened. What happened here is that they have a, a cloak of devouring. Anybody who tries to manage it, or because this, these guys were really bad at managing sticks holding a cloak, the cloak slipped into them, and by touching their skin, it devours them. So the cloak just devoured four peasants that they hired to work on their dungeons or their slave master. So, yeah. Okay. Can you drop? Timmy, go put out another wand to add to 
miners. Should I go as undead, or should I probably just go disguised as a child as usual? Uh, the disguise is probably useful. Okay, he pulls a head out of his bag and puts it over himself. So, once he leaves, should we, like, be worried? He has a lot of interesting skulls in his bag, Timmy. And he's been around for a long time, and people die regularly. Yeah, yeah, uh. I, only, I only mean that he could have come by those skulls in his wanderings. Well, his words that he defeated, right? Or did I hear or see that? The, the dragon? Okay, so, uh, he... He goes puts puts some wanted uh, not wanted posters but like a workers needed like around town he puts a couple posters here and there comes back about an hour later it's like all right I'll put a bunch of those and the two foremen that you guys left behind that just saw you pretty much just murdering cold blood four of your previous workers they're saying so um, yeah can we please not do that again finding hard workers is really hard. The two foremen say. Yeah, we uh, definitely didn't want that to happen. Can we just bundle Rob under a couple layers of clothing and have him hold it? Wait. Oh yeah, the workers are completely gone. No fresh corpses even to raise to take in the town. I know, they're just completely in <laughs> gone. <laughs> Yeah, you could have Rob the zombie uh, wrapped in cloaks and carrying the cloak for you. You could even just wear the cloak. So undead things are infected. They're not living. Only living things are Yeah, that's Rob the zombie. <laughs> Rob zombie, I know. That's funny. So I guess extra clothing. I guess... Probably something to hide the stench as well. Or at least dampen it down, yeah. Yeah, I don't think a bath would help. Would press the digitation work? Because that cleans uh, that that cleans surfaces. <laughs> Technically. I guess you can clean some I'm of it, yeah. I guess guts are still guts, though. Can you use it to make him smell like something else, not rot, just you know, unwashed? Alright, so eventually you do. You clean them up nicely. I mean, you, you pretty much go in the middle of the night where there's barely anybody walking around. And you arrive at the blacksmith with Rob Zombie in, in tow and the whole entourage. He's like, what kind of weird crap do you want me to craft for you today? First thing he says. I guess before we head out, can I give the remaining uh, workers like a couple extra silver? Hopefully they don't run off in terror and tell everyone. They're not allowed to run off Timmy's. We, we have more than enough stuff to keep them running. The two farmers said, yeah, sure, I see how much you value some of the people you hired. Okay, we'll take a few silver, I guess. Stop giving the minions money. They might get ideas of freedom. I, I don't want them to go completely insane. And as you give them some silver, they said, Oh, we also found some of these little gems when we were digging. And he hands them just to you. Are they red or <laughs> different? Uh, these are little green gems. Appear to be like little emeralds. I guess I can do a quick appraise. And then yeah, so far you're the only one who's seen it, because you're the only one who, who, who said anything about compensating the workers, so... So far it was just you there, talking to the workers. Wow, okay, they're worthless. You, are you think they're just bringing me just glass shards, really? They're, but you hold on to them anyway, I guess. Yeah, 
guys. I appreciate it. And then I guess I will follow, catch up. I kind of want to know yeah, how this is going to play out with the, the battery. All right. So you guys are the blacksmith now, and this is what, what kind of crap can I craft for you today? Actually, we were hoping you could help us sell something. Are you selling a zombie? He points at Rob. <laughs> well, How much would you pay for a zombie? <laughs> Rob, the zombie looks at you like, wait a minute, you're not going to sell me? Not you, dear. I would make some other ones. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I heard you dealt with or dealing with souls, right? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. If it's the right, right, right quality of soul, I'll buy it. Uh, um, my boot you know, has the worst. No, Sorry. no, get it. You wait outside. <laughs> I, I, I start pushing Nosk towards the door. You, wait out. I miss when Nosk said it. I don't want to hear it again. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I was going to make a soul joke about the soul of a shoe. Oh, God. Out, out, out with you. Well, I guess I'll quietly uh, lean on the door. The okay. Door. All right, so I guess, you, I guess if you're not selling a zombie, but I guess I would pay if you had zombies. I'd probably pay like a silver each. I mean, they're kind of useless. It's not bad. Um, but what we have today is this particular cloak. He pulls out a monocle and looks at. He pulls out a very giant book and start looking at the book, looking at the cloak, looking at the book. Not touching the cloak, but he keeps looking at it, keeps looking at it. Spends a good ten minutes. You're bringing a cursed item to my shop? Really? He says. Oh, well, someone thought it was very valuable. I mean, you didn't ask if it was cursed, but it just told you if you asked us what it was. You're really gonna let a little curse get in the way of a profit? No, I was just wondering what, 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 how much you're, you're wanting it for it. Had it came, what, what did we say it was worth? Anybody write it down? Try to oversell it. Um, quite a bit. I didn't. Wisdom, <laughs> wisdom roll. Let's see if any of you guys remember through wisdom. <laughs> it was like a hundred. Right. It's like, it was a lot. Like, Nagi has no idea how much it was actually worth it. Neither does Nori. You've completely forgot about it. Nosk also completely forgot about it. This is horrible. There's my brother. He's good at all that. Mitro seems to remember exactly what it was worth, and so does Linda. Yeah, it was about 120,000 that we, we put the value to this. It's a good thing we have you two to roll well. And as you, as you say how much the thing this is worth, he goes, well... Seeing as this is cursed and all, it's going to be really hard to move this, and I will probably need a few weeks to get this kind of gold. The best I can do is 60000 for it. Hint, hint, you can never sell v items at full value. No star would I ever buy items at full value. Obviously that. And always a half cost. There, This is a rule. I'm just role playing. And ten. <laughs> a quarter yeah, plus. Yeah, we, we know we know that stores can't sell with them, can't buy with them. Like I'm saying half. All right. Would you like to do the diplomacy roll opposed to the diplomacy roll of the I'm blacksmith? Terrible. No, I'm, I'm terrible. Somebody, somebody else can do that. <laughs> All right. Whoever has diplomacy roll against the diplo the blacksmith if you're gonna try to negotiate. Hey guys in chat, this is a. Sorry, did he make an offer? Nope, he's asking how much you guys want to offer. Like, says the best he can do is 60,000. It's like, how much gold does one person need? He says, well, obviously you guys don't know how much this is worth, otherwise you would make me a, a proper offer here. So 60,000 is my final offer. I 
I mean, I'm okay with it. So is this the party saying yes, they agree? It's at least twice that. It's more money I've ever seen. But, uh, is, is it really you own defense. the guild? How is this more money than you've ever seen? Well, is this a lot to the normal version? Yeah, so one of the players is the Thieves Guild leader. Yeah, but if you're the Thieves We have an Necromancer, a Nagi, uh, I have a Cleric of Norgorber, and a, a Summoner. It's the, it's the most bizarre party. And there's a fighter who's not here today, but who's the only not evil person at the party at this point. So do we have an agreement, he says? make a decision are you selling the cloak or not I'm indifferent that's a yes anybody else it's worth at least twice that isn't it yes because as you can clearly see you're not equipped to find a buyer for this sort of gear for this sort of cloak at least not not anybody who who, who dwells in the dark arts I mean, Mitchell might. Do we really want to take Mitchell? How, how, how long, hypothetically, if we, if we, if, if we agree to six, how long is it going to take you to get the money? About five seconds. So do I hear a global yes then from the party? So, missing final decision for Midro, Linda, and Nor. You guys are the last three. Midro's a no. I, I was all for it because it's not like we can sell it on our own. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned about where else we would take it to sell it if we don't sell it to this guy. Should we probably try to get information out about that? Think on where else where we who would be interested. I don't think anybody would recognize my person. Anybody else who would recognize it. Is Kobe hurting on money at the moment? Depends on your definition of hurt. Mr. I bear some six hundred dollar gold as as the leader of the thieves killed. Alright, as the blacksmith Hang on a second. I don't think I ever told you this, the guy's name, did I? Well, you never did. I need to look it up. Hang on, Hang on one second. Just a second here. I need to find where it is on the text. I mean, it's either okay. So it's either we sell this to this guy, or we start our own business in corpse disposal. One of the other. Hey, we can always do that. He, he says he wouldn't mind disposing these That's true. We do have another means of getting rid of them. We could always hold on to it till we find somebody with more sense who's willing to pay what it's worth. I'm down for whatever decision everybody else goes with. Well, we're kind of you delineated. So, not for the fur price.
Here you go. His name is Ephes Maltets. Elvis, what? what? <laughs> for chat, for you guys who are watching from Mephistopheles. It's obvious, but... He says, okay, how about this? 60,000. 60,000 and the next item you sell to me, I'll pay an extra 10%. Since you guys obviously are good at finding very expensive and good items. Okay, so that's a yes. So he, where he tells he tells you, please put the clock right here. He points it to this uh, circle on the floor. So uh, is it gonna take time to receive the money? No, he's gonna give you right now. Uh, do you put the the clock on the circle where he asked you to? Yeah, we'll put it there. Alright, as you put it there, he, he says something in what appears to be an abyssal and inferno all together, and something along the lines of Sumon Grak Drakruna, and he starts speaking a lot of dark like dark language into it, and uh, the cloak just catches on fire and gets swollen onto the floor. And as that happens, the gold appears where the cloak was. There you go, there's your payment. Nice. I have got to trick. So that was... Well, he did. He does know about the cloak. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could hold on to a share. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it all starts. <laughs> it says, well, pleasure doing business with you. That might be useful. I did other things too, but don't you have to be able to... Staff of burning death. And immediately after you guys sold, he's like, are you guys looking to buy anything? I have plenty of things to sell. Yeah, does he only do weapons? I do have a mace of blood for sale. I also happen to have a scarab of death for sale. Scarab. Scarab, scarab of death. No, I, I know scarab. But yes, sorry, English. I has it. Yeah, scarab. Uh, I, 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 my, 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 my thought process was scarab of death? Question mark. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know what. Uh... You want to know what the items do, pretty much? Yeah, sure. Alright, the Mace of Blood is a plus 3 heavy mace that must be coated in blood every day or else its bonus fades away until the mace is coated again. The character using the mace must make a decision team will save every day within its possession or it becomes chaotic evil. Which in your, your guy's case would be just like a small alignment. <laughs> And he says this yeah. mace of blood is only 12,912 gold. He also points to the scarab of death. 
This is a small scar brute, held for more than one round, it carried a living creature in possessions for one minute. It changes into a horrible burrowing beetle-like creature. The thing tears through the leather or cloth, burrows into the flesh, reaches the victim's heart in one round, causing death. And this 25 reflex save allows the wearer to tear the scarab away before it burrows out of sight. But they still take 3d6 points of damage that cannot be reduced in any way. The beetle then returns to the scarab form. Placing the scarab in a container of wood, ceramic, bone, ivory, or metal prevents it coming to life and allows long-term storage of the item. I also have I have an armor of arrow attraction. Wait. Yeah, no, you heard that right. How much is that? That would be ten thousand six hundred and fifty gold pieces. Just out of curiosity, other than suckers, who would buy that? Listen, you'd be surprised the kind of idiots that come by my store. I mean, I'm thinking and we could put it on like one of those zombies. Exactly, Ruby. Have the zombies run around and swipe all of the arrows that are coming our way. And they are protected while all... That's actually not the stupidest idea I've ever That is brilliant. <laughs> that is actually not a bad idea. I am really surprised. That is an amazing idea. I, I, I rescind all previous statements. Alright, let's describe what armor arrow attraction actually does. Magical analysis indicates <laughs> that this armor is a normal suit of plus 3 full plate. The armor works normally with regard to melee attacks, but actually attracts ranged weapons. The wearer takes a minus 15 penalty to AC against ranged weapons. The true nature of the armor does not reveal itself until the character is fired upon in the earnest. <laughs> That's great. So I have one question. Yes? Ranged weapons. Yes. Specific range weapons, right? Yes. Okay, Linda, you can do whatever you want. I just didn't need a fireball getting attracted to whatever it was naming. Us. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was just thinking if we can talk, talk, talk the guy down to uh, something a bit cheaper because I can't afford ten thousand uh, gold pieces for that. But like I said, the, the armor doesn't doesn't actually do what you think it does. It doesn't suck up the arrows. It's just really hit really easy to hit somebody that has this armor on with ranged weapons. It doesn't just pull the weapons towards it. It's just it's called that way, but it's it's meant to look like it has protection from arrows, but it's a cursed item pretty much that he's trying to sell. Ah, uh, okay, never mind. I was hoping. And he he kind of just does a little smile. Says, "I also just acquired a." a a bag of devouring for 120 gold if you want to buy it. Oh, that sounds cool. How much is that? 120,000. I smack Linda over the head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wander off looking at the other, other items and shop. Do you have, do you have any magical <laughs> items that are quote unquote somewhat normal? Oh, fine. I do have a Shocking Burst Dagger for sale if you want to buy one of those. I think it is. I think yours is a fire. Uh, I think yours is a Flaming Burst. Shocking Burst would be electricity. He says he also has a cloak of resistance plus two. <laughs> he assures you it's not the cloak of the Varian. When a character is proficient in one type of weapon or two, are they able to use two of the same type of weapons? So I have a rapier and a dagger. Am I able to use like two rapiers, two daggers? Should be able to. They're light weapons. You get less of a penalty if you if you take like a two sh uh, light weapons versus a medium weapon or a small weapon. Uh, 
I guess just um, a question, even though I'm just saying this in my head, I might be able to get a better deal for my uh, associates if they have any. How much is the dagger and the cloak? Uh, the cloak of resistance plus two. Um, let me see here. Hang on a second. Uh, let's see, uh, 4,000 gold for a plus two. How much was the dagger? Uh, checking on that right now. Second, let me see here. So no one is interested in that cloak. That seems pretty good. I'd be interested, but it's low on my list of things. It's like I'm trying to act like all rogy and not tanky, which I usually am. But... Okay, how much would a plus two enhancement bonus to a weapon cost? I'm, I'm having a hard time finding that actually in Google. Generally, some. It's a, a shocking burst is equivalent to a plus two. I think I, I'm just looking it up right now. 8,000? 8, 8, 8, yeah, 8,000. That, that's an 8,000 for a plus two dagger, the shocking bonus part. Oh, the shocking burst counts as a plus two bonus, pretty much. Pose one more question after. If Ernie, would you be willing to sell your soul? Well, do intelligent zombies still have souls? Still have one out of two in the round. Well, I can only take it so if somebody who, will, who willingly sells it. I'm not opposed to the idea, but I don't think. Oh, I can afford anything. What are you offering? Whatever you desire. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. How much are souls nowadays? <laughs> it depends. It's like how they're retrieved for you. Or you said willing, yeah, that's yes, true. Willing. That's the important part. Yep, willing. they're in danger. <laughs> Although, it's our cult. He says, I already have a cult. I don't need another one, please. When do you collect? Is it... Upon your death. So if we were and if we don't die, then what? Then I collect your soul anyway. That's what I thought. So what yeah. is the stipulation on that? When we would have died of old age? He pulls out a contract and it, it seems to be like a gigantic like the scroll, like a very long scroll. The letters are super, super tiny and it gets smaller the, the further you read along. Is he poor Durger? Hmm? Wait, where is he? Uh, he appears to be just like, looks like a human. A very... Very handsome human. We did this. <laughs> Mitchell, you're the one who speaks Abyssal. Help yourself. I think I'm gonna hold off, even though I really wouldn't mind that. It's Mephistopheles, guys. If you guys in chat are wondering, they, they don't they don't know this, but it's Mephistopheles. Right <laughs> now. 
So what would it take to read the, the contract? Uh, knowledge planes. Oh, sweet mercy. That's an item. What'd you find? Uh, you seem to have no idea what this contract means. <laughs> okay, I'll hand it back and walk away then. <laughs> what language was it? It's just out of curiosity. It appeared to be in 18 different languages. You could make up that the title said, For your soul you will have, and then nothing else made sense after that. Did we get a... bring a potion or something? No, we didn't. Okay. No, we didn't get any other magical items, did we? So... I love how this is turned into a shop. Um, then he says, I'm guessing that it's not that you're looking, so none of you seems to be... Willing, willingly wanting to sell your soul, is that correct? At least not at the moment. Not current. Appreciate the offer, though. I, I'm looking for a couple of basic things, not not sell my soul worthy <laughs> things. <laughs> Alright, what are you looking for? I need a new quarter staff and a new sling. He, he right. reaches his hand behind the counter and just pulls a quarter staff. Here you go. Cool, thanks. <laughs> he says, please, he I says, wanted. please sign here. No, no, no thanks. <laughs> he takes the quarter staff back. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I'm gonna sulk in the corner now, thanks. <laughs> or you could just buy it for a gold. Oh, yeah, that's what I want. I had to try. No. I had to try. It's like, it's like once we get away from here, I'm, I'm like suggesting no one ever comes here. With <laughs> I'm suggesting Linda doesn't come here alone. Elsie can come here alone only once. All right, he takes her one. He takes her one gold and pockets it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anything else you're looking for? He says. Do you sell cool potions, or is that a different spot? He snaps his finger, and like this whole uh, alchemist table appears before him. Take your pick. Cool. Do you have uh, anything that will turn a magma dragon into an icicle? That is an oddly <laughs> specific. That is exceptionally oddly. Specific. I like cough a little bit. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> he peruses through his collection. Like I'm afraid I don't have anything like that. Uh, cool. I will take some potions for like uh, alchemist fire and uh, some sleep potions and uh, some uh, some uh, poison potions. Yeah, yeah, I, I need a whole gambit of stuff. All right, yeah, basic potions pretty much anything under 2,000 gold, you can easily find it here. So if you if you know the value, you can pretty much just buy it off at the, at the, at the price value and just re subtract it from your gold. Wait, did you say anything under cool. 2,000 you would have? Yes, for potions. No. That got me to thinking, uh, even though we have a potion. Maybe. You do have an alchemist in the party, yes. Would my dagger... My dagger heal the dragon, I wonder. Uh, you have a fire dagger? Yeah. That probably wouldn't hurt him at all. They are made of magma, after all. Giving me second thoughts of the uh, electro dagger. But I would want it to be praised, though. When, you know, from uh, somebody. He says, well, I like you. You can have the dagger if you just want to sign this. I don't know about the... Uh, okay, how about 7,000 for the dagger? Signatures. Signatures. 
from um, anyone, I guess, able to do an appraise on this? If I ask. Or... On the Shocking Burst Dagger? Yeah, I just want to make sure it's not another cursed item. Mm -hmm. It seems like he deals a lot. That would, you need a spellcraft on that. If anybody wants to figure out if it's actually cursed or not. Uh, Nagi looks at the item like, no, it seems to be what he says it is. Nora agrees. Linda agrees. Mirdra, on the other hand, but there's something odd about this dagger. What do I think is odd about it? It, it radiates evil. Yeah, I guess I'll tell him that's that. If, if you didn't say anything, I was probably totally going to um, buy that. But I'll uh, try to nonchalantly say, think, I'll think on this for a bit. You can hold on for a bit. Fair enough, and he snaps his fingers, the dagger disappears. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to future business. It seems like we've been finding all sorts of stuff. <laughs> exactly, Ruby. Uh, do you have an item called a handy haversack? Yes, I do have one of those. Is that what Elson got, or is no. that a different thing? How much is it? Uh, the, the, the actual value of a handy haversack, I don't have it on top of my head. I don't know what it was. I'll check it. Yep, two thousand. Oh. oh, is there something magical about it? Yes, it is. It's like a bag of holding. It can actually hold as much as two cubic feet in volume, twenty pounds in weight. Large in proportion of the pack, it can take up to eight cubic feet or eighty pounds of material. Even when so, feel backpack always only weighs five pounds. The important part is the pulling, just reaching it and pulling it out, no digging around. Exactly. You can do Accio potion, like if you want to. Say so the Harry Potter stole from D and D, but whatever. Um, Resisting a joke. How many pearls of power do you have stocked up? As many as you could ever need. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Just sign here. No. In that case, I have one for sale. And I, I almost want to bring him some customers that would be tricked into signing stuff. Again, so willing. Well. Willing. He says, would you like to sign up for our new magical newsletter? Just need your signature on this parchment. <laughs> See, he, he's good at, you know, doing the whole winning thing. <laughs> Just getting what people want. Somebody in chat gave me that idea. I had to use it. How about two? Hmm. Okay, I guess I can, I can, I can procure a second one. I'm guessing you want first level pearls of power, right? <clears throat> first level pearls of power are a thousand gold piece a piece. If you want a second level pearl of power, that's four thousand gold piece each. But he only has first level gold pearls of power for sale. He says, now, if you would like to get this ninth level Pearl of Power, just sign here. I don't have any ninth level spells, so no. Shame. Puts it away. I'll, I'll, I'll take the two you're willing to sell me in here before I sell them. Let me know. Again, for gold! 
Okay. Like I have to say that every, everything. All right. He takes your two thousand gold. Just subtract that from your total, please. And, and in the sack. In the sack. So subtract four thousand gold from your total. Anybody else looking for any items? Making a mental note. Uh, does he have any cloaks of protection resistance? I have the cloaks of resistance plus two. I have uh, actually two of those for sale. I'll take one. What do you have uh, for magic ropes? I have a cloak of devouring that I just acquired. <laughs> oh, you mean you said robes, That's not cloaks. I'm sorry. Hang on. I, I was asking for both. One second. I'm, I actually there was one item that I had stuck for him. I need to look it up. What's the call? Hang on a second. Also, I have a, I have a question. Are, are we playing with encumbrances? Really? Not really. Not gonna be that. I've been. I was. I was just gonna ask because my my carried weight just jumped by about two hundred when we got ten thousand plus. Gold. Oof. <laughs> yeah, I imagine I would be stashing it in. All right, he says, oh, he looks uh, Mildred like, I actually just happened to find a really useful item that I think you will like it. Specifically you, Mrs. Mildred. This item is called a Robe of Bones. Yes, I know what you're referring to. Do you want me to speak it out loud, or do you know what it is? Uh, I'm going to speak that out loud. Okay. Do you want to do it, or do you want me to? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you do. You do. Oh, okay. The sinister items functions like a robe of useful items for the serious necromancer. It appears to be an unremarkable robe, but a character who dons it notes that it adorned with small embroidered figures representing undead creatures. Only the wearer of the robe can see the embroidery, recognize them for the creatures they become, and detach them. One figure can be detached each round. Detaching a figure causes it to become an actual undead creature. See the list below? The skeleton or zombie is not under the control of the wearer of the robe, but may be subsequently commanded, rebuked, turned, or destroyed. A newly created robe of bones always has two embroidered figures of each of the following undead. Human skeletons, wolf skeleton, heavy horse skeleton, a fast goblin zombie, a tough human zombie, a plague ogre zombie. This guy has the best stuff, but I'm probably not going anywhere without Medrill. She saved my life plenty of times. Checks. Um, yeah, just for the funsies of it, I'm going to spellcraft that in the cloak. Okay. So, so you basically become an undead Pokemon master? <laughs> sort of. That's awesome. They appear to be exactly what you thought they, they are. And how much do you want for them? Uh, the Robe of Bones, 2400 gold. And add the, the Cloak of Resistance to that. Cloak of Resistance, 4,000. No, that's actually what their cost is. That seems, yeah, it's surprising. Yeah, I'll hand over the money for those two things. Thank you. He takes it, hands you the items. There's side effects to that there. I can't well, imagine that there possibly is any side effects. Speedy way to let them. The cloak say you turn into undead when you pull one? Or? No, it's like you, you pull a little patch out of it and you toss it and it becomes an undead creature pretty much. It's like a, there's something called a robe of many things that you can sp spawn like ropes and stuff out of it. This one is for necromancers, pretty much. And this robe in particular just happens to be very uh, bright blue. But unremarkable otherwise. And he looks towards uh, Nazca at this point, and uh, not Nazca, sorry, yeah, towards Nor, and says, "I also have a few skulls for sale. Would you like to buy some?" <laughs> He's got you pegged, Nor. Oh damn! I don't really have a good amount of skulls right now, unless you have anything oh, yeah. particularly pretty. Which uh, which store did I get my dragon skull from? Not the store. Okay, that's good. Cool. 
Uh, he points out, I have this one item called a Dark Skull. This skull carved from ebony is wholly evil. Where the skull goes, the area around is treated as though an unhallowed spell has been cast and the skull is touched at the point of origin. Each Dark Skull has a single spell effect tied to it. The spell in the standard is listed given an unhallowed spell description. It cannot be changed. Uh, this is, he says, it's only 60,000 gold for this. What a bargain! I have no idea what that does, but that sounds fun. I really gotta like, keep track of all this stuff. Other than that, he just has a few other skulls are just decorated, and he says, maybe your friend Timmy would be interested. He stops by buy stuff from me all the time. Yeah, he bought quite a few skulls from me. Majoral, isn't Timmy a miner? Well, he supervises the miners. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. I like that one. That was good. Majoral, I'm holding you personally responsible for anything Timmy's sign. That's fine. So, I guess you guys don't want to buy anything, or are you done with your shopping spree? I've got, I've got everything I can afford that he's willing to sell me. Unless he was willing to sell me a ring of wizardry for under 8,000 gold. <laughs> Since I can totally sell you one for, I can just give it to you. Without my soul. Well, then I guess not. Okay. It's okay, you can't beat his bargains. He can get you anything. He says, free will, it's a bitch. Anyway, well, now that we've made a small fortune and several dangerous items. All right, uh, as you guys are turning around to leave, I need one of you guys to give me a perception check. Whoever is the last person to turn around, just pick one. Alright, so I guess let's do a Nosk. Nosk, give me a perception check as everybody's leaving. Nosk? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, uh, you don't see all that. No, you don't see anything. Never mind. As you leave the, the door since to close behind and locks. No what? Alright, so do you guys want to rest for the night, get some hit points, and head back to the... explore the... the big dungeon up there? And the fortress? I feel like that's probably a good idea. Anybody else? Yeah, let's see if the dragon came out and destroyed the house yet. So do you guys want to fully heal maybe some healing spells before you go to bed so they just recover it all in the morning you're fully healed? Is that what I hear? I still have a few left. I think I had the the dead condition by my name. 
Oh, the D, the disease. Right. That's right. Oh. You can gather around. I'm going to do a channel energy and just heal all of us. So let's try that first because I have like two left. So that's 3D6s. Everyone huddle. Okay. Right, group hug. Group hug, exactly. It immediately shocks the <laughs> the 12? 12 healed okay. back. The real test is going to be when you guys have like a one or two hit points and the rest of the party, and she goes channel a negative energy and just murders the entire party, takes all the loot and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> I mean, I'm done. That'd be great. Okay, so 12 for everyone, I'll do one more. I mean, no way giving that idea. Uh, and another 8. So 20 all together. Okay. Does anyone need healing still? Because I have a couple of Cure Moderate wounds as well. I'm only, probably needs I'm only five down, so I'm okay, Yeah, give me one then. I'm still okay. Up well, back to that uh, condition, but I start seeing or feeling weird. I think it's been a day. Uh, it's going to be in the morning when you wake up. All right, so you're all fully healed then for the evening. Depends on what she rolls here. Didn't she, she just healed 17 back, so that money. looks like a pretty decent heal. I'm sorry, what was that? I'd be didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, she rolled already, so it's whatever yeah. is on the screen. All right. Okay, uh, morning comes around. Uh, Nosk didn't feel so good. Uh, go ahead and give me a fort save as you're waking up. So go to your defense to stab and hit the 42. There you go. Alright. Um, nothing seems to... Nothing odd seems to be happening today. Uh, just remind me again tomorrow. Yeah, you feel like a little bit of a sore throat. But you don't feel any effects. It's just kind of like, a little, feel a little odd by it. And your breath smells awful. Even more so than morning breath. Like an, an additional level of awfulness. I'll try to get some herbs or something to counteract it. Okay, do you go in town look for like somebody who sells sort of herbs to deal with this, or do you f procure some your own yourself? I guess just uh, something quick. Well, I guess if we're going back, yeah, if it's not too much nuisance, I'll just try to procure it myself. Okay, yeah, you find some. Um, uh, what's the word? Uh, wild, wild mints that growing just outside your house. You chew on those, and he masks the the horrible breath that you had a second ago. All right. Does anybody have anything else to do in the house in the meantime? I need to summon my bear. Somebody needs to point the miners into the certain way. We'll just say I summoned my bear. Okay. You're very Did we ever send them south? What's if the miners dig south? I feel like I feel like that. Good idea. They say south. They say south of the pool, south of Tammy's room, or south of the chemical work old chemical workshop. Well, how does Tammy feel about going south of his room? They say, well, it's your house. I'm just taking care, right? I mean, it's e it's easy to cut off this hallway. So I guess south, be wary of the pool down. Yeah. He says, okay, how far it's down do you want us to dig? We might, we might need more workers, so if if anybody stops by, how many do you want us to hire? As many as are willing to die, I mean work. Alright, so we probably should need a yeah, small amount of money here to pay them off. Do you want to leave some behind? Timmy's in charge, don't worry. He's got the money. No, he actually doesn't have any money. All he has is skulls. How much money does he need? 
Um, a few hundred silver should cover for the foreseeable future. So 30 gold? Yeah, if you have that much money, yeah. Yeah, I can give that to him. Generous. Uh, hopefully they're like our butlers for life. Do you hand it to, the gold to Timmy? Yes, and... He takes two of the coins and puts it on his eye sockets. <laughs> That's fair. I give him uh, explicit instructions to only pay them um, once a week, as they're due. Okay, and he points out to the piece of paper that you wrote down th this much right here? You only pay them this much? And they're, they actually are within ear shout as they hear this. How, how, wait, how much are we paying them a week? I believe it's four copper. Oh. Oh, well, we'd want it. They would want it. Uh, how fast? Though we don't want to pay him without them doing work. They get paid once a week, as is tradition. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand that to him. That amount in in copper and silver, so he he can pay exactly what's owed. Okay, he says. Can I keep the eye sockets, though? Sure, dear. You look very handsome. Thank you. So, are we actually paying him anymore? I was a little confused. No, we're not paying him. We're just leaving money behind, so if we stay out late. Yeah, Timmy's in charge of payroll. That's all. And not Dave, he's just kind of, kind of like just drooling at you, like, what do? <laughs> There'll be plenty for you to hit in a bit, dear. So, you bringing not Dave with you this time? Yeah. Okay, so off to, off to go explore Karamak, I guess. Onwards and upwards. Several moments later. Several hours later. Yep. Few hours later. Uh, took about you guys eight hours. Eight hours to get here. The journey was very uneventful. You run to a few adventures. You kill them on the way. Nothing special on them. Right, so there is that door that you guys have not gone yet. But other than that, the entire this entire area is explored. Do you guys want to head out that way? That's the only area we haven't. I will check that door for traps. All right, go ahead. So give me a perception roll. It appears to be completely and perfectly safe. I will uh, open it and then after I know it's open, I'll kick it. Okay, nothing happens. You kick the door. No, I mean, I was hoping it would like open. Or is it an insert? Swing inside. It swings to the outside. Okay. okay, so you guys want to head north and follow the path north? Right? Left. <laughs> Smart ass. Hang on a second. As you guys are walking towards the, the this place, um, this is here. Uh, one second. So this is called. <laughs> I like how they call it the stretching way. It's, it's simply an exposed, winding, narrow pathway that climbs to the bare rock face of the drowned menagerie, uh, fifty feet above. So there's you see some sort of structure fifty feet ahead of you. Uh, you will need a climb check as all of you are going down 
going up this uh, very narrow path at, on the side of a mountain. I knew I forgot something. Yeah. All right, well, this is the end of the party. <laughs> I mean, Elson had that rope that he would attach to the wall. If you guys want to say he's with you guys, just so you guys can use his magical rope that attaches to the wall, so you guys can just hold on to it. I'm not going to be that much of a jerk to you guys. That's probably a good idea. Well, I have uh, somehow negative climb. I guess since we gave him the, his ten gold, like his, his share to the gold, we might as well use his rope. Yeah. So, you guys, there's no way you guys can feel the DC 10 climb here with his rope being used so i'll just let you guys get all the way there hmm totally uh tie myself it's a good thing you had the rope that would you would have collapsed 200 feet below into the rushing waters of the river but yeah that that magical rope that he had that would help you guys with a guide you easily get through so let's go ahead and into the caramac towers and place yourselves at the K1, at the bottom of the map. Very bottom, it's a very large map. God. That's where you guys are coming from, the little arrows. Yeah, it's a huge map, I'm at 20%, it's still in my full view. K1. Mm -hmm. And you see a door. This ends at a small star. Uh, ends the small stairway that descends ten feet to a recessed iron door. The door appears rusted, shut, and blocked uh, or some, by some by something behind it. Well, don't think a lockpick would uh, help getting through this door. You will probably need a strength check here. Not Dave. Okay. How does the place look? Decrepit or... Um... Just... All you can see is this door and everything else is rock, so... It's very... It's kind of hard to see, but the, the, there's like... It appears to be like four large tanks that in, in this huge building. Would you like not Dave to push the door open? Yep, go ahead. Yeah. Do a strength check. We should get him a butler's outfit. He, 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 he doesn't even barely, he doesn't even move the door at all. The door seems to be very, very sturdy where it is. Uh, you can see those containers uh, up there. You can see, like, from, from where you guys were coming up the, the cliff, you saw the four containers that uh, just hanging out in the distance above it. Like, the door itself would be really difficult to open through it. But the containers appear to be 40 feet high from, from where you guys could see it. Okay, you knock on the door and this housekeeping. No, no answer. Nobody's home. Did uh, we hear anything? No. Nope. We able to uh, do an assist? Uh, push on the door. Or... Uh, maybe knowledge engineering if you want to try to figure out a way to break the door down. Can we see what's blocking it? Uh, it appears to be, like, if you put your ear against the door, it appears to be a uh, sound of water on the other side. Okay, don't open the door. Huh. Ooh. Glad someone heard that. 
Mirja, however, uh, has no idea how she would break this down. You might either try to um, approach from the from the containers, maybe climb the side of the mountain and go through the top of the containers. Oh, there's no way. There's no safe, safe way to do this. I mean, you. How long is the magical rope? I don't know. What's do you get? Might know the name of the rope is. I thought it was just like a normal climbing rope, so it was like a hundred feet or whatever. Aren't normal ropes the containers? No, usually uh, you buy it in 50, 50 foot, and then you put up about 100 foot. Is it a rope of climbing? I think it is, yes. Okay, because okay, that's 60. Get us all the way up, though. You said the windows are just about that high, right? How bad are we wanting into this? Place? If you were to oh. cause the rope a climb, it should not itself. You can reduce the climb check by 10 if you wanted to use it for climbing, which is what I guess you guys were using when you guys were going the side of the, of the cliff, pretty much. Yeah, the climb here would be, it's a little more difficult because there's no path, so you just be climbing rough rock. I wouldn't say I have a fear of heights, but I have a respect for what they can do. Somebody's got to climb. Yeah, my bear can talk English or common. Yep. All right. Do you want to send it to one of those containers then? Oh, does your bear have a name? Bear. No. It's Neptus the bear. Your bear can't fly, so you could send your bear to scout ahead, I suppose. I, I could. Is that what you guys want? I, I mean, yeah, that's probably so. going to be. Alright, so which container do you want to send Neptus into, or above? Do we want to send more rope up with them? Or secure? Are you guys tying the rope to the bear and everybody's just going to hold on to the rope as the bear carries you guys around? That actually <laughs> might not be a bad idea. Or just have them, like, on the ledge so he doesn't... I imagine his flies can't hold all of How, What's what? I, I'm going to cast enlarge person on the bear so it's... There you go. Alright, how much strength does Naptis have? Give me a second. Mm-hmm. Like, how strong is this bear? God, I've never made this part of the encounter so real dick, but, by the way. Uh, 17 normally, and then when you increase it to, um... <laughs> I like this somebody Ruby in chat said, very strong. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's very strong. When, when you add it to the uh, enlarged size, it'll be plus two, so it'll make it 19. 19. So he can hold three of you without even holding a sweat, uh, without pulling a sweat. Yeah, knowing my bad rules, I'm terrible at climbing for some reason, I want to tie it to me. Alright, do you guys want to pick one of the containers to just drop into and just bring three in at a time or which more important question is which one are you guys gonna make a, a drop into or do you want to scout ahead first oh well, did the bear see anything well, send the bear to scout yes 
I, I will hop onto the bear's back and scout ahead. All right, which container would you like to try? Uh, the one in front of K3. Cool, we're just scouting, so we see them down there and they're they're like looking at us pissed off, right? Unless you're saying make any noise, they're just they're just batting their wings down there. Cool. Can I check out the other ones without a problem? Yeah, I'll just show what they look like. The green dragon comes out. Ooh. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, there's three of those just flying in there in the container. Alright, which other one do you want to look at? That one? Okay. That one. There should be some plants Ooh, in there. What are those looking like? Some plants in there. By the way, if you look at red, the map right above it, this is just the, the level 2. But it's the, it's the same containers, by the way. So even though this is K4 and K5 there, they're just this is just the level 2. So you can just look, walk, look above it and you can see down. So unless you're making any sort of noise, they don't oh. notice you. Cool. Uh, let's look at the uh, the one to the right of K five. Yeah. All right, Cthulhu it is. Did you just say ah as you saw that? Okay, uh, let me give a perception check for my guy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. I'm officially scared. I'm just kidding, by the way. I was just trolling, you guys. I was just trolling. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Get I'm still on book two here, right? <laughs> I guess so we'll check out yeah, the Yeah, that's what that thing looked like if you need a bigger picture of it. That is exactly what it looked It's time to retire. You just... The thing is just happily flo floating around inside this container with water. Alright, and you want to look at the other container, I'm guessing? Yeah. So, I'm guessing we want to drop down into K4 and beat up all the things there? I'm but kind of worried. Hang on. Hang on. If you're, you're on level 2 looking down, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, if that's... How we're doing yeah, that. as you're looking into those containers, you can see that they have multiple doors. They have doors in the second level and doors in the first level at the very bottom. So that's why the doors look a little weird. So if you see the double doors, those are at the very bottom of the, the, of the containers, and the single doors are at the top level of it. Right, but this is all like... There's, there's not like a roof or anything, right? No, no roof. She, well, she's flying above it. It's like this is all open air, right? Correct. Okay, well then, come on, guys. I'll fly you all three at a time. Sleeping, let's sleeping gods lie. <laughs> let's go up to K9. All right, put yourselves a K9. Giant ass bear. Do you guys do this very quietly, or do you just go talk the way around as you're doing that? So go ahead and put yourselves over K9. I did not expect to have a flying bear in this campaign, so. Well, when I picked this campaign, I didn't expect that there was going to be a flying bear in the campaign. I'm actually curious how you get through this without a flying bear now that I think about it. That's true. Oh, yeah. So, I want to almost go over what are we looking for here? Did we find our friend on the road somewhere? Like, we went back and forth to our home. The friend we released who sent us. I do need a perception check from all of you guys who are down this hallway. Mitra doesn't seem to find anything interesting. Neither does Nor. Nagi doesn't find anything of value either. Mitra also doesn't find anything. Nasuka, on the other hand, was very attracted to the few potions on the side of the, uh, in the shelf that for some reason everybody seems to have missed. Um, I would need uh, two spell crafts. Kind of 
like chatty ultra short. Like, I don't even know where we're at. It's all the way up. You have to scroll the, the map up. It's a very large map. Did you point him out to us? Nask? Yes. Okay. All right, and uh, and then uh, the seat perception eighteen. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay. Okay, so you see a, a portion of displacement, a portion of a gas gaseous form. Uh, it also appears two vials that appears to have blood inside of it. Uh, I need knowledge nature. Yeah, anybody, does anybody acknowledge nature? Nor does, okay. Uh, they appear to be basilisk blood. That sounds fun. Well, does anyone know what that is? Does? I posted there. Uh, she wouldn't know what that is with the knowledge of 11. All right, and there's also uh, another potion. So I need another spellcraft and a wand. With it. So I need two more spellcrafts. All right, Midro knows what they both are. Uh, one is uh, a potion of non-detection and a wand of charm monster with 44 charges. Yeah, potion of, sorry, the potion off got cut off, but potion of non-detection in a wand of charm monster with 44 charges. Das, can you use uh, wands? Because that non-detection one could be useful. It is based on intelligence. Or is that what it's I use magic to fight that, right? All right, question is, where are you guys going next? K8, right? What? Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I do have the check, so I can use magical device. I mean, my, my thought process would be probably that <laughs> well, Nasca is the closest one to it. He's also the trap lighter. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess I'll put the traps. The drop. The door appears perfectly safe. Okay, as you open it, a grand stone bridge arches over the gorge to a stack of rock which perches a high tower with a lightning rod. This bridge appears to be three feet wide and has no handrails. If you look to the far right, that's what you see. Like the, the, you see the area that says L5, side view of the rooftop? That's what you see there. So how narrow was this bridge? Three feet. No handrails, nope. I do have intelligence of 14, but I don't think I'm this smart. You can roll for am it. Am I able to make... Am I able to make, like... 
entire rope around this whole thing and like inch it with me. You sure can. While the other end is tied to me. You can tie to the door if you like. So do you want me to pull? Oh yeah. Well, you said the whole bridge was really skinny. Three feet wide, yes. Well, dealing with like 50. I mean, you just can't go two by two. Yeah, but dealing with like 50 yards of rope and stuff. 50 feet of rope. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Which I is, do wanna. Which is 10 squares, which is not enough to get across that bridge. Does it look like it's breaking apart or is it just really skinny? It's a very skinny bridge, but it's made of rocks, so it's very solid. I do want to tie myself up either to the door if I think the rope reach all the cross it. Okay. And then I'll slowly progress. Okay, I should probably see what you guys see as you're going through the bridge. A great stone tower perches atop a sheer stack of rock above the river. The tower climbs from an elaborate iron steeple from which a huge lightning conductor calls out to the skies. Right. Do you guys want to go all the way to the what door? Uh, because as long as you guys are not in full, running full speed, you can easily make it to the door. If you want to go full speed, you need an acrobatics check. Walk one by one. Do you guys want to approach in the same formation yeah. you guys are in? Because I can just move everybody at once. Yeah, I'll slowly walk. Hope nobody's afraid of heights. You are 600 feet above the water. Give or take a few hundred. And not enough to paralyze me from fear, but have a respect for what they can do. Um, are there? I'll be fine. Are there dual that doors here? And uh, you see double doors in front of you. We'll see if they're locked. They appear to uh, to not be trapped or locked in any way. However, you hear a very loud grunting and huffing and puffing from the other side. Like, huh, huh. It doesn't appear to be locked. I just know there's something here and we're on a very skinny bridge. Yeah, you see it sounds like something very large is on the other side. Quick stealth in and scout. Um do you think one of these doors would hide view of my party if I try to stealth in. Open the door crack. You want to try to open the one, the top one? Yeah. Alright, you're going to make a stealth roll to open a door. Stealthly. Go for it. Are you guys, everybody, is everybody else happy where they are before this happens? I Any... I, I don't know right now. I'm trying to not have to pee because of the sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, not Dave, of course, is very large, so he's very carefully walking there. Am I the only one tied to something? Or yes. I guess there's a flying bear that can eventually maybe save you all. Uh, it's a summoned creature, Robbie. It's like, uh, they call it an Eidolon. So summoners can shape this animals to whatever they want it to be like. They, they, they just happen to put a wings in this one bear. So it's actually a bear, but it's an Eidolon. They just shaped it like a bear. I did try to stealth, but I don't think it's... Alright, I need to roll perception. Hang on a second. 
Sorry, uh, I'll be back in a minute. I gotta take London out. Okay. You say you want a perception check. Yeah, I need to do a perception check from my... Was it perception check for this thing? Try and have him scout ahead. Uh, that's. Perce I wasn't thinking that just until now. So I think I was probably going to open the door. That doesn't look good. As you opened, it, apparently, as soon as you try to sneakily go by, you made made noise, unfortunately, and the thing heard you, and a just loud roar just comes from the other side of the door as the thing just bursts through the door. He looks friendly. So that looks like. And we'll wait for Mirdra, but we're gonna you probably imagine what's happening right here. Initiatives. Oh, what shenanigans? What? No, the the the, the sound or the. Yeah. What am I sound effects? Really? Thank you for that. I'm just glad we didn't die horribly from like a bunch of water just pushing us over the ledge. Yet. Oh my goodness, I'm not last in initiative. What happened? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll wait for Mirdra. Oh, look, she's back. And I guess you need your initiative. Would I have to cut the rope? Because I'm not sure if it would let me go into the building. <laughs> I mean, it is a magic rope. Are you using your actual rope or the Elson's magic rope? Yeah, you could just order it to unknot itself, yeah, if you want to. This is the part where we, this is the part where we back up. Oh, uh, I don't know if we have the time to back up. I'm wondering if I should charge in, and try to keep its attention while you guys charge in as well, so we don't fall. I have, a, I have a great idea. Just fall or it break the, uh, the bridge. Well. It's, te it's it's big, so I have a great idea. There's a question would be if it can fit through the doors. Otherwise, I might go in there. I'm not trying to let a game. It is. Are they are double doors? He does. Is it mad at us? Hmm? I said, is it mad at us? It looks very mad at you. Does it look like it's gonna come charging at us? It sure does. Okay, cool. Yeah. Nice, keep your turn. It appears to be a golem. That's fine. It looks, can be deceiving. It could be 
you're just mad at its situation. Alright, so Nask, what are you deciding to do? I think I can barely make it to the bear and hopefully the bear would fly above me. You can double move if you like. True. enough to get an opportune attack, do I have to disengage? Uh, it hasn't acted yet, so it does not provoke an attack opportunity yet. Well, I guess I'll, uh, back up closer to the rocks. Okay, Nagi is up. So I'm guessing yeah, you just moved, okay. Nagi is up. I have a feeling I know what you're gonna do, but I'm just gonna wait. You know exactly what I'm gonna do. Yep. Uh, so we're gonna grease this 10 foot area. God fucking damn it. <laughs> I've done this before! <laughs> Big angry monster doesn't know this. No, they might just set him on fire, which is not going to do anything. <laughs> Alright, and are you happy where you are, Nagi? Oh, I'm content. Alright, so just make sure you're covering... Let me just make sure I draw this. That's the area of Greece. That is the area. Okay. Let's see. I have to look at the tactics because I do not have to. I don't get to meta game any of my characters. They all have their own tactics. Yeah, I'm trying not to as well. We're talking in between. Let's see. Golem madly attacks anything that moves. It focuses all attacks on single opponents, staring and rending with its claws until they're dead. Okay, just charges in. Oh, I guess I spent so much time with this character for nothing again. All right, let's make a reflex save. Reflex save. Now this could be really bad for Nor if he makes a reflex save. He has a minus one to his reflex save. Just giving that. Good so far. Wait a minute, is this stats? That cannot be right. Let me double check if the stats are correct. That cannot be negative one. Oh no, it's a plus four. It's a plus four. I just didn't put in the defenses. <laughs> it's actually plus four. And the answer is <laughs> fuck. <laughs> does it get a reflex save to catch itself? Yes, it does. Secondary reflex save should not completely fall off the place. God fucking. <laughs> wow, I feel sorry. <laughs> this creature may survive the fall. Oh my god, that's. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the second time! <laughs> so <bad>. Yep. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> exactly. Alright, does he have swim? Let's see. Yep, uh, what happened here for everybody asking chat, uh, Grease was cast, so when they walk on it, trip on the Grease, try to hold on to it, didn't hold on to it, so he fell into a, into the rushing river, and it's now trying to desperately swim back. The, the funniest part, chat, is this is the second time this has happened in a boss-ish fight. Boss, <laughs> boss fight, yeah. Was quote unquote boss. <laughs> Alright, suddenly I don't know if you feel bad about the next encounter. And, and so, uh, oh dear. I, uh, I dusted myself off and dispelled the grease like it was nothing. Because <laughs> it was nothing. God damn, I fucking hate grease. <laughs> you, you keep giving us fights on, in 
in very high areas above very threatening things. All right, listen. When I design encounters, I don't. They're not making this dumb. This is from the campaign. <laughs> I don't. I don't think they account for for players being this clever. Okay, sure. Somebody's asking me to ch uh, write in chat. Hang on a second. Yeah. How, how much intelligence did your character have? Oh, Eighteen. Oh, okay. No, this is right up my alley. <laughs> I mean, even if, here's the thing, even if he didn't charge in, he probably didn't have any ranged attack, so it's like, okay, everybody start shooting. Well, I guess uh, I'll make my way over and see if there's... Making my way to our town. I almost don't want to check for traps just because I think that lumbering oaf would... <laughs> well, on the front door, probably on the front door. All right. A curving stone staircase wings along the wall of the circular chamber uh, up to a trap door in the ceiling some 30 feet above. The room's in chaos, with books, alchemical equipment, and curiously twisted metal everywhere. A huge broken cage stands in the center of the room, its bars bent and doors sm smashed open. Well, that, would explain, that would explain the, the, the prior fiasco. Was this the real monster? You know, I need to get text to speech. Sorry, speech to text for people who need help, like understand what I'm saying. That'd be. I think that'd be a good idea. I need to look up into that. Like, have like a closed caption into the stream. It might help people. Why? Not everybody has perfect grasp of the English language through speaking. Some people need to read. Twitch might do that automatically. Uh, YouTube. I'll, I'll look into it. It might help people who wants to follow up. I'm just I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around people who can read English well but can't speak. That was me for seven years as a kid. It's very common, actually. I mean, when people yeah. learn languages, they do so in different ways, and speaking can be one of the skills that they don't get to practice as often. Whereas reading and writing, you can do on your own. So it's quite. Frequent. Yeah, I guess. So I'm, I'm, I, I guess I'm just going back to my experience. It's usually easier to learn something when you converse. In. Yeah, it's it's different for everybody. Now people talk in English. All right, so you do have a trap door above you. Is there anything interesting in this room? Oh, uh, just a broken cage and trash things everywhere. So uh, check the traps and see if it's locked. Um, Mirdra finds nothing of value. I'm checking the door. Okay. The trap door does not appear to be trapped, but it, it is locked. Alright. Has everyone moved some more? Do you guys want to in this be in this room as he opens, tries to op uh, disable the door or disable the trap door? You guys want to wait outside? We know how this happened last time. Yeah, actually, the last trap ha happened with outside the room I was in. <laughs> now Dave walks in. I, I know what happened last time. Major told me. You said it wasn't trapped. Yep, it is locked. I guess I'll do a disabled device. Okay. And I you failed. You can't. You failed to open the lock. So the choice here is you can keep yes. rolling until you get high enough, or you can take 20 is what we call it, which means you spend two hours to pr uh, very carefully is, is what if you're rolling a natural 20 into your die roll. But it would take you two hours to break through this lock. I don't want to, I guess, meta game, but I can try it maybe one more time and then try to let not Dave bust it. Okay. Unless you want me to do the two hours. You know, that you're up, really up close to the trapdoor, you see that the trapdoor itself is going to be completely made of a damantine. Wait, what? 
<laughs> the trap door is made of a damantine. So I guess I'll try to open it up one more time and then figure it differently out. Mm-hmm. Alright, so do you want to try to disable one more time? Yeah. Go for it. Nope. Yeah, and I figured. This is a tough one. Um, and you said it's made out of something we probably can't break in? Or... Yeah, breaking through this would be right. very difficult. Like, taking 10, you can also take 10, which would, would spend an hour trying to break through it, or you can take 20, which is spending two hours just working on the trap until you actually manage to get it open with an, pretty much a 20 roll. It's a, it's a common mechanic, it's not metagaming by any ways, and it's very common to people to use this. Well, do we, anyone need a short rest? Because this is probably what will... Uh, the time I need to break through it. I mean, the only thing we're down is one level one spell zone. Yeah. Well... Unless you guys have a different way of opening it, this one seems like it's going to take some time. Okay. I guess I'll get started. After about an hour and a half, uh, you see that little that thing that's, was, that fell in the water, desperately trying to swim upriver back in towards you guys, but he seems to be stuck in this current right here. He's just swimming here in place, but it, uh, it's not he's not making any progress. I sit down outside watching. <laughs> it's like once it gets close, is that... 600 feet down and get back up here that Yeah, way. no, it's just, it's just swimming against the river, but like just growling as it's doing it. It, it seems it still seems to be very angry at you guys. See, let's throw rocks at it. Okay. Let's not tempt me. I'm busy unlocking this. All right, so you guys don't, for the you're gonna just spend the next half hour just watching him swim nonstop there. Unless they come up with something better. Or... You 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 pick the locks. We we get entertained. Now you can just sing for us. I mean, technically, I can. Eventually, he managed to get a lucky roll and he progresses five feet. Alright, so your disabled device is typically a plus eight, correct? So you get a 28 on your check. Uh, let's see here. Probably. One second. Unnatural 20, right? Yes. This doesn't work, but I have to blow it up. Or see if there's a window. I didn't see us. Oh, hang on, there was something else in the room that I forgot to give it to you guys. Uh... Magical key for this door. No, you, you open the door. I'm just looking. I'm, I'm, I think I forgot something about this room that you guys are in. In L1, I need to give it to you guys. Uh, hang on. Okay, yeah, there's several notes spread all around, all around this room, and I will need a DC third, uh, and I need a linguistics check for somebody who wants to try to figure out or comprehend language spell. I think I have a bunch of things for linguistics. Where, where are the things? I remember I added a thing. <laughs> no, I, have, I have it checked, um, but I'm busy. I, I definitely have the skills, so I can do that as well, and then I've got one more thing. Anyway. Um, hang on, let me try uh, skill check first, and then if that fails, I can bring out the big guns. And it's kind of an obvious thing here, but you could, just like him, he's taking 20. You could take 20, spend your time like deciphering the text and all these notes by taking 20, if that's what you want to do. I guess might as well, since we're stuck here anyway, waiting. Okay. Uh, Alright, so if you guys actually go ahead and take the time and you, you aid another, you can actually make the DC 30 linguistics check. And Midro has a 29 maximum that she can roll, but if Nor assists her at the same time, you can beat the DC 30 here and get the notes. Uh, it, says, it tells about the existence of something called the Bond Slave Thrall, and its ability to control the beast of Lapistad. 
but not its location or how to actually activate it. But so there's some uh, somewhere within this tower, there's something called the Bond Slave Thrall, that you can control the Beast of Lapstad, the thing that you guys were the trial for, you know. And so somewhere within this building, there's a way to control it. Interesting. So he could have been guilty. Just not knowing it. All right. Eventually, you do open the, the the trap door. If somehow you were to remove the trap door, its value. Let's see here. Appraise check. I thought you were going to have something dramatic happen. Oh, wow. Uh, did you believe that? Uh, let's see. Let's see if everybody gave me some appraise. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, let's see. All right, Nazca Mirdrill, come. Actually, we're missing one. Linda, Linda, roll. All right, Nask, Mirdrill, and Linda, come down to private room, on Discord. Uh, it's worth about three thousand gold pieces. Back to the upper room stairs. I guess. Since we're all in the same room. Right. Go ahead. Should we uh, like eye each other? Like, hey, Captain Coffee. Others, what this will be about. Uh, that is up to you guys. Okay, I'm going back to Jenna. Right. Like, oh, you guys can put here. Let's see, where does that... How heavy is this? How heavy is it? Uh, pretty heavy. Pretty darn heavy. And it's currently still attached to... As a, serving as a trapdoor. So... It'll be a troll carrying duty. Alright, and you guys move on to L2. You see where the F thing here is? That's where you guys just come out of the trapdoor there. I would say this has some value. Should we take it? Yeah, I'm sorry. What is, what is it attached to? Uh, it, like, what are it is a trap door, maybe completely of a dementine. But what's it attached? What's the floor it's attached to made of? Stone. Wait a second. Wait a second. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. You're saying the trap door is made of adamant. Correct. And just, just out of curiosity, it looks like adamant. That is also correct. Okay, I know what I paid for the adamantine sword, and Nas knows what she paid for her adamantine whip. Mm hmm. I'm pretty sure we have an idea of what this is for. A brace check. Yes, I guess you would get a bonus because you've seen a adamantine before, so. It's not gonna get us very high, but if they see it. If y'all try and shortchange us massively, we're gonna be very suspicious. I'm just not giving out details unless you ask. I don't want to I'm carry it back home. Well, we have, you know, a zombie troll. But I guess, do we want to procure it right now or leave it until we leave? Leave it until we get it to come back. Okay. Hey, it could be a shield for your troll. Okay, so you guys go through the trapdoor, I'm guessing? Yeah. Lifting up the trapdoor, about how much force does it feel like it takes to lift? Not a lot. Once it's unlocked, it opens pretty safely. Okay, as you go into the room, the circular room is choked with webs. A stone staircase curves along the wall, another trap door in the ceiling. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I need you guys to give me a perception check, as all of you who are in this room now. So put everybody, uh, everybody getting out too. I'll just, dra let me just drag everybody, it's just easier that way. Perceptions for everybody. Uh, 
Honestly, you can have not day aggressive if they don't make and immediately get attacked here. No, you do not get immediately attacked here. You can have not day try and rip the thing off right now. I can carry it. Would it fit in your bag or is it probably too big? That's why, that's why I asked how much does it feel like it weighs. <laughs> yeah, or the size. It doesn't have the weight, but it says it's a solid block of adamantine. Adamantine is pretty light. Okay. It, I, it's an 80, I have an 80 pound limit. If it's more than 80 pounds, then no. But that means it would take about 80 pounds of force to hold. Which have negative strength. Alright. Um, I can't be free. Any, any more perception? Uh, did anybody miss any perception check? I think we're. Was that everybody? No. Everybody. I think we're missing Mirdrill, right? Yes. Sorry, I can roll. I'm not going to beat um, better than a 20, though. Okay. All right, so yeah, we see nothing of value then. Uh, <laughs> she crit. <laughs> Does a natural twenty help? <laughs> uh, the unfortunate thing is, for percent for skill rolls, a uh, crit does not matter. <laughs> what? Not for skill rolls. No, that's for saves and uh, chances to hit. But for skill checks, this is pure value. Mara, on the other hand, noticed some scribbles on the wall. Did you really just do that? That is impressive. Yeah, this Nick noticed some scribblings on the wall. A very faint chalk marks on the east wall of the room. Can we tell what it says, now that she points it out? Uh, a crude chalk diagram depicts the iron spire atop of the tower and two strange apparatuses at its pinnacle. An arrow points to the larger of the two devices next to the words. And then you can't quite tell unless you make a linguistics check here. And you guess it could be really high, which from what you guys can roll, you guys cannot make this linguistics check. Not like that, we can't, but I did have some... Good lord, Mirjo! Seriously? Three crits? Four crits? In... Oh, wow. Which we don't Four need out of five, yep. Yeah. Alright, um... It's something along the lines of... Um, the storm collar must be activated to energize the bond slave thrall. Like a collar of storm? Storm collar? Yes. And as you're reading this out loud, uh, something that uh, was invisible until a second ago, it's now uh, speaking into your mind, just like a uh, pantomiming, uh, pointing to the chalks on the wall. It, like, he, uh, this looked like a little homunculus, but this one seems really old, and it's like pantomiming with its hands. Like, is it, you can't quite tell what it's, tr it's trying to say. Only to mid yeah, to mid-draw. But... So only I can... It, it doesn't speak, like it's pantomiming with its hands, like it's trying to, it's trying to make, so you need a linguistics or intelligence role to try to figure out what it's trying to tell you. Okay, it seems to be pointing towards the writing on the wall that you are already looking at. And it's mentioning, it, it's, it's pulling its hands towards him. Uh, it's like it, it's it has both hands uh, curved, and they he's putting both hands towards his chest. Are you saying you wrote that? He shakes his head. He points to the right in the wall, and he does this shaking thing again. I 
don't understand, dear. Try something else. All right. He also he he will also point up. Like he he he's, he's a very tiny creature. But he's pointing up, and he's he's doing uh his hand is like he's waving his hands in the air like it's, and like making a very scary face yeah. above, pointing above his scary face, and he's pointing back to the wall, and he points to the, he taps to the top of the tower, uh, on the on the drawing, and taps to the lightning thing. And and tap uh, and he, sh he shakes his head back and forth and towards his chest again. You're saying it's scary, and you don't like it. He kind of uh, sh uh, sh nods his head now. Maybe I should have bought that evil dagger. And he he is he's, he's now making a hand gesture as if he's uh, as if he were to write something. He says, "Do you have anything to write?" Pretty much, he's, he's gesturing with his hands. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I'm going to hand him some parchment. Okay, he grabs some of... And grabs, yeah. Okay, he grabs some of the chalk and starts to... Uh, actually, not chalk. I guess, yeah, he would grab some of your ink and starts writing. Start writing on the parchment. Uh, help save Karamark trapped upstairs with big, big monster. Is someone controlling the monster? Is that what you're pointing at this for? This is, this, he writes down, this different monster. This monster cannot be controlled, but you could control other monster. I just don't know how it works. But we can't control the one upstairs. He, he says yes, he writes down. Okay. And Karamark is your master? He, he writes down, yes. Okay, you stay here. Are we are you talking to ghosts again? Uh, apparently the uh, uh, flesh inventor is trapped upstairs with a monster. Uh, are we wanting to save this for next session or keep going? I'm game. I'm not going to keep going until somebody brought it up. <laughs> That is entirely up to you guys. I can go another hour. I wouldn't mind calling it in not too long if that's okay. Yeah. I have to yeah, this next battle is gonna be pretty pretty gnarly. You probably will not be finished today. Yeah, right. So, are you gonna up its power level if uh, Elson comes? <laughs> no, no. If I up it any higher, you guys will not make it. Do you want to at least a description so you can at least know what you've got ahead of you? Yeah, let's do that. So wait, what language was that writing in? Anyway? He was writing in common. He, he starts to draw what the creature looks like. Uh, he appears to have uh, eight tentacles. Uh, he draws four extra legs. He draws seven mouths. He draws a bunch of eyes on it. And he, he, draw, he says he points at Nut Dave and he says he, 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 puts, the, he puts two fingers up and he draws like around Dave. Really big. Like him that they're trolls or like him that they're not dead? Not dead, just big, he writes, though. Well, I was worried when you said tentacles, but then everything else has made me surprisingly more calm. He writes down, like a big spider with tentacles and lots of mouths. Well, that pulls out mind flares and avalets. I think we're fine, guys. Wow. He writes down, Master called this Aberrant Promethean. He writes down. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, I have no idea what we're going to do. Alright, so this is where we're going to call it. And two weeks from now, we should all be, be able to be or have our full attention to it because uh, me and they will be able to play from home in two weeks from now, so it'll be awesome. Uh, will we no. have a lighter if that is correct? Okay. Yeah, Elson said he should be able to make the next one. Right. And I've, I've already got the battle music. All right, you might want to bring spare characters. No, I think we're good. <laughs> Absolutely.
surprised he's still alive. I think I'm the guy who went down the most. Uh, yes. You yeah. Are. Since I've been with you guys. Oh God. <laughs> nice. Nice. I'm just I'm ima I'm imagining we expect the giant monster that roars and all of a sudden. <laughs> He's so badass, he doesn't need the music. I'm more surprised that my cats have not craved me for food this whole time. They've just been... Oh, I spoke too soon. The second I said cat, Sprinkle showed up. Oh, yeah. said Timmy gave his theme, his own theme song. Oh, I've got Timmy's theme song. Give me a second. Alright, hop on the stream if you guys want to check out Sprinkles. Yeah, well, no, we're done for the night. I was just sprinkles are just saying good night. Yeah, no, I've got Timmy's theme song already. So. Bye, everyone. Have a good night, everybody. Have Thank you night. for playing. Thank you all. It sounds majestic. Yep. Like a hint of mystery. Oh, somebody redeemed some treats. We're gonna give him treats. As a, this is a treat for you guys. You get to sprinkles gets to get food. Have a good one. As a as a last thing for the for the stream here, I'm just gonna yeah get sprinkles a treat. Come on, buddy. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Gotta be on camera, buddy. Gotta gotta put up a show. There you go. Good boy. Want another one? Yeah. There you go. Because it's nowhere to be found, so I guess she doesn't get a treat. <laughs> so, good night, guys, and thank you for watching. As always, I'd appreciate you guys being here. And I will see you guys tomorrow night. We're going to play some more Stellaris tomorrow night. And yeah, have a good night, and thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the, the craziness of my players. So, good night. <laughs>